This episode of Comedy Bang Bang is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easy to turn your idea into a new and unique website. Showcase your work, blog, or publish content, even sell products and services of all kinds in just a few clicks of the mouse, my dear boy. You can customize everything from look and feel to settings and products using beautiful templates created by world-class designers, and there is nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you are ready to launch, use the offer code BANGBANG to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Red sky in the morning, sailor take warning. Red sky at night, sailor should fright. Red sky never, sailor be scared. Also, sailing is scary. Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. Woo! Thank you to a picture of a tractor for that catchphrase submission. <laughs> is that your actual laugh? Halloween's over, my friend. Halloween, young man. Oh, dear. Uh, Trick or treat, young man. Welcome to the show. Scott Aukerman here. This is uh, another episode of Comedy Bang Bang, and maybe you've never heard the show before. Maybe you just recently got into it. Maybe you have, uh, maybe it's your first day as a human being. Maybe you're a little baby. Maybe you are an alien coming down to this earth, learning about what it is to be an earthling from this podcast. And, and maybe, you know, this is a great place to and start. By, by the way, you get it, finally. <laughs> yeah, because this is the show where we talk to interesting people. Yep. And uh, that's a lot of what being a human being is. It's oh, just yeah. finding interest in other people. Uh, the curiosity of the human experience. Sure, it may kill cats, but humans, we love it. Ah, uh, well, by the way, mm. please. Aliens. Please what? <laughs> please come to Earth and kill our cats. <laughs> please, get God. Decimate. I'm, a, I'm desperately allergic to cats. Please kill them all. Let's get rid of them, but I would love for somebody to blame who is not a human being. <laughs> That's right, because if you're a human being and you're going around killing cats, you may be a serial killer. Cat genocide perpetrated by aliens. I would love that. And then we kill the aliens See, ourselves, because no one cares if we kill the aliens. It right. Alf had it right. Alf I, re- had it right. I now realize we're just doing the we're plot. We're just to Alf. pitching Alf. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. My name is Scott Ackerman. Uh, I'm the host. Forever will be the host. And uh, to my eleven o'clock uh, in my body position right now, you know him as the Hainong Man himself, Hainong Manzukis, Jeffrey Character Wheaties. A.K.A. Uh, Jason Manzukis, A.K.A. the Hainong Man, is my co-host today. Uh, Jeffrey, how are you? I'm pretty good, uh, Scotty. How you doing? I'm great. Uh, uh, what's happening? Well, we're deep in uh, Navi Doggy, so that's yeah. something. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure, sure. Novi Daddy. Novi Daddy. Ooh, Novi Daddy. Ooh, Novi Daddy. Do it to me, Novi Daddy. Ooh, Novi Daddy. Is this what people like when yeah. they listen to this show? Yeah. Oh, and that's the thing. If you're tuning in, get ready for one hour, 15 minutes of baby talk. <laughs> oh, Ooh, Novi Daddy. I don't know, sexy daddy. Oh, do I deserve three spankings or four? A, I made a boom boom in my diapy. <laughs> You you need a boom boom. No, or you I made, made a boom boom. Oh, I need okay. To be I need a boom boom in my diaper. If you know what I mean. Yeah. I don't oh, know what I mean. We're though. just living that hashtag diaper life. Diaper life, baby. Diaper life. Oh man, we're just pooping at pee and at will. <laughs> So we're no longer talking about sex, you and me. We're talking about nope, pooping we're just, and pee. We're just <laughs> we've moved on. We have matured. Oh, we've, we've we, like a human who comes to Earth and ages rapidly. We have moved straight from a childhood human baby who comes talk, to Earth and an ages alien, rather. I mean, an alien. <laughs> uh, we have we have aged through the entire process in a way. If you were an alien and you saw the lifespan of humans, you may think a human comes to Earth and ages rapidly. In a way, sure. if, if they have lifespans of. Several hundred years. I wonder if everything lives about the same amount of time or if or if there are such things as eternals. What do you think? Like celestial beings? Sure. Um, yeah, meaning, I wonder the if... The old gods? Life conditions, nothing, you know, fancy schmancy or magical, but if life conditions on other planets... Oh. Uh, Just mean those the people that live there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Their physiology, Can perhaps? Can I ask honest question? Sure. Honest question. Sure. And then I'll answer your question. Okay. Do you believe there are... There is intelligent life in on other planets. 
it's tough to say uh, if if you truly are kind of an atheist in a way, I would think that you would think there probably would be, but that, you know, just, uh, the, the, the whole thing about it is the, the conditions of this earth and its proximity to the sun, uh, have, have flourished and there's water sure. on this planet. Yep. So, uh, that accident if it is an accident, truly, maybe has occurred in the infinite reaches of space. It would seem as though it would happen right. again. But it's so far away that we'll maybe never see I, that. I think in all likelihood. Unless, I, I don't know, suspended animation, is that actually a thing? Could it what happen? What do you mean? Uh, putting yourself on a spacecraft, going into suspended oh, you mean, animation. You mean so for that, us to find it. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I or for them that. to find us. Well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I more think like even with well, maybe people that take. I, 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 I don't know that there is. I, I don't, I don't, you don't think there is because I you think, believe there's one true God who has created us and look, no, looks down upon us like a human zoo. <laughs> Human zoo. <laughs> human zoo. Human zoo. Hey, nong zoo. Uh, hey, nong zoo. Um. Yeah, no, I don't know. You think I, God's a creepy little perv watching us? Okay, so this is this is where you're coming from. I think <laughs> this you just invented that. I I think there is a God. I think he can't watch us all simultaneously because he doesn't have magic powers. But he likes to pick one of us and just perv out. So that's why he created all of us because like he there's like, so many of us he can finally he, find what he's into. It's like it's like having a lot of cable channels. He's yeah, just exactly. flipping through people to be like boring, boring, <laughs> boring, boring. boring. Okay, I'll watch this for a couple <laughs> minutes. Right. Uh, oh, okay. What is this? Oh, they're doing another bang bang. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah, but oh, I'll watch this on. for an hour and yeah. 20. <laughs> I'm in, baby. I'm God and I'm in. <laughs> I'm God and I'm in. And I, and by the way, I'm God and I watch them record it. I don't listen to the <laughs> nope, podcast. Don't listen to it because I want to see them do it. <laughs> and then like later in the week, God can be like, oh, I missed them record the episode. I guess I'll watch some dildo listen to it just so I can <laughs> right. process it. Yeah, he can't actually listen to podcasts himself. He, no. He doesn't have a he Zoom. Does, he, <laughs> he doesn't have a celestial Zoom. God don't have no Zoom. Oh, boy. In my theology. <laughs> yeah. Are you a, do you have any sort of spiritual side to you, Jason? I uh, do not. I am an atheist. You are. I believe and, and in not zero. agnostic. You, you believe conclusively there is no God. Well, I can I, I don't have conclusive proof of anything. Like, mm -hmm. but I, that would be weird if you did. It would be. And I wasn't <laughs> sharing it. I'm also 300 years old. What? You're an eternal? I'm an ancient. <laughs> I'm one of the elders. Um, no, I, I, you know, I don't. I, I think there is nothing. I think, um, I don't think there is a God. Well, what a cheery sentiment for a Hooray! Monday to be released. First thing when people are driving to yeah, work. Yeah, there's nothing. You're doing it all for nothing. It's all pointless what, what you're doing. What you're doing is for nothing. You earn no credits for nowhere. Jason, do you hope your work will live on after your death? Oh, are we talking about my legacy? <laughs> yes, of course oh, are we, we are. we talking about our We're legacies? finally there. We're finally oh, there talking about God. each other's oh, wait, legacies. So you are, in fact, wrapping up the show. Is that because you're talking <laughs> about legacy? I can only assume it's on your mind. I don't know. It, who how knows? many eps are we in? How many, how many eps of this do we We're do? We're around 520. How much around content have you created? So much content. Maybe 100 live episodes. Over 600 episodes. And, do you, and, 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 and not to turn your question back on you, but do you feel as though this is a lasting legacy that will live on in a way that you are happy to be representing you into the future? I mean, I always thought that maybe I'd be known for a TV show or a movie or something like that, but uh, podcasts are fine. <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> Isn't it so fascinating? Like, like why, why minimize a truly... A, 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 like extraordinary accomplishment. Well, it, because it feels a little like Fibber McGee and Molly or something like that. Sure. That, that it's going to get, you know, I'm a dinosaur going to be eclipsed yes. by whatever the new medium is. You know, like VR is going to come around and suddenly it's be like, oh, remember when we listened to podcasts? <laughs> now we're like God staring at people while they record them. I guess so. I guess that, yeah. <laughs> it is interesting because I feel like, uh, and not to be corny or whatever, but like, I will say the people corn have... Corndog, Horndog over here, by yeah, the way. Cor corn dog, all right. The old. original Corndog, Horndog, <laughs> Jason Manzoukas. Yeah. Um, I feel like people have such um, uh, intimate relationships with podcasts. Yes, and they with, fuck them. With us as the people who <laughs> talk to them in their ears. Right. That I would argue you probably have had more of an effect on more people personally than if you'd created a great TV show. Uh, probably, you know, what with uh, screens becoming smaller and audiences dividing Shrinking, up. Shrinking, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, at these days, a hit TV show gets a 1.1. .1. What are we doing? Well, that's not a hit TV show. <laughs> well, okay, a 2.0. <laughs> 
Oh, one point one. That that show is not a hit. Well, it's not. But I mean, it stays on the air. Now, Come on. Anyway. Yeah, we're, 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 we both listen, work in the. In I just the business. got the numbers. <laughs> we're what? gonna go through. We're gonna go each each how show. The, how are the numbers for this show? By not, the way, not good. Oh shit, not good. You may know. Weirdly, you, your yes. podcast numbers are mixed in with the TV ratings. Oh, Nielsen. Fuck. Why Nielsen did I choose to do of, that? All of TV and then Comedy Bang Bang. Why did I do that? Oh my god. Uh, you may know Jason from, by the way, if this is your first time listening from the movies, The House, How which by the way- How many people are yes. first time listeners? I don't know. Probably every episode, there's a, a couple I, hundred. I'm so curious. How did they come to it now? Who cares? What, what, I love it. But, but by the way- I get that you're curious, but who cares? Uh, like, but, but by the way, like recommend it. Like if you like it, new person. If you like it, yeah. yeah this may forward. be a fine episode uh, with which to start. And who knows? Maybe this is a classic episode that people are looking back on in the entire run of five, 600 episodes. Perhaps. Saying this is the best episode ever, or perhaps there are yes, there are people who are like, oh, you got to check out Comedy Bang Bang. Here's the episode to Here's listen the episode to. to. Here's listen to. the great jumping on point. This is it. So I want to make sure that we set the table. Di- By the way, you mean that episode called hashtag Dipe Life <laughs> <laughs> or Corn Dog Corn Dog? <laughs> Uh, I want to set the table. And when you go out to dinner, yes, sir, you like a nice set table, right? Uh, you know, I don't mind. You know, I don't mind if it's like a, a like a beautifully set table. Do you like to go to a Dick's Last Resort where there's like just paper I, towels on the ground I don't, and sawdust? <laughs> okay, paper towels on the ground. Yeah, Dick's Last Resort. I've never been there. Oh, okay. Uh, the, what is it? Well, there's a restaurant in San Diego. I don't know whether it's a chain, but that's the only one I've ever been to. I, I thought at one point in my life, oh, that might be fun to go there. Boy, was I mistaken. Really? Um, it's. I think there's sawdust on the ground, but also it's just like basically they give you rolls of paper towels because because their food is so messy, and then yeah. you're encouraged to why just throw it down so on messy? the floor. It's like a cream corn emporium. Like, why is their food so messy? <laughs> I uh, mainly because maybe you're supposed to eat it with your hands. It's oh, like it's chicken one of those? wings, oh, 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 burger I see. I see. type it. things. Yeah, yeah. It's not like food that's actually like laying waste as you eat it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> it's not like right. organic food gross. that's shitting as you eat it. Whoa! There's an idea. Food that shits. <laughs> food that shits. Food that for shits. you. Right. Food that shits for you, so food, you don't okay, shit. So here's the thing. So that you, what what happens is right before you eat it, the food shits out the part that you're <laughs> that you're gonna shit out. Yes. So you only get the nutrients. You only get the, and the all nutrients. The good stuff. Well, we talked about this years ago with Rob Delaney on the program that uh, babies, when they're first what born, what a catastrophe. Because he's on a show, catastrophe, uh, and also it was a bad episode. But um, the uh, babies, when they're first born, they don't shit. Because they are only eating what they need. Oh, interesting. And and waste shit. Uh, we are, we grow up shitting because we're eating too much and we're not eating just our basic nutrients. So you're advocating that we get back to a diet where we eat only what we need and thus don't shit. Exactly. So you're you're, tr- you're at war with shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hate it. But food that shits that would be great because food a, that shits a, for burger, you. a burger would like basically they'd have a scan. They'd have like a laser scan that would go. And, and scan you. Okay. Determine oh, the laser scan scans me. Yes. Determines exactly Who is they? the burgers, okay. the, the organic burgers, the shit. They scan you. They look at you. They determine exactly what nutrients you need. I don't know if I want to eat something that is a laser. You have to be naked. Okay. I mean, I know <laughs> it's I'm like you on, stand on a scale. Now I'm back on board. <laughs> <laughs> You're naked. It scans your body. Do all restaurants have like a, a naked scale area? Oh, of course. Yeah. Cool. And they also have like Lorenzo Llamas with a laser pointer <laughs> pointing at your body. Topical reference. <laughs> We're old. Um, and uh, then Lorenzo it, Llamas. It, it, you know, Shay Llamas from the Bachelorette's uh, sure. father. Yeah. <laughs> um, Fernando Llamas' more, son. <laughs> sure, of course. <laughs> what a legacy, that family. Oh. Um, it scans you to, to determine exactly what nutrients you, you need. You pick it up by the bun, but and then a, it goes, it just goes. <laughs> And shits out everything you don't need. Okay, but the you in shit form. But what you eat is still a burger. It's still yeah. It's still whatever. Because I is. would think in in this diet you'd have to just basically eat pills. Well, that's the, the uh, give me I've, that pill. Uh, give me that pill. I want that pill. <laughs> I want that pill. That's what I it feel. Was. I feel like that. Uh, uh, the pill that you eat to stay alive, where all food is just a pill that tastes like food. And I it's think, what you need. And it's what you need. Yeah. I think it's coming. I just don't think it's a tiny pill. Oh, it's pill. coming I, as well as shitting? <laughs> what so, if your so food you're, you're positing a world and shit in, at the same in which, time. Yes. Just in, both in, ends. <laughs> <laughs> 
That was Ooh, a little higher pitched. Del- delicious. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's. I think it's down the line. I just think it's going to be as big as like a, a roasted ham or something. And the you're going to sl- and you're going to slice it like it's a ham. Okay. Yeah. And okay. So you know, you're, you're going to put it in the microwave. I was with you up until the ham pill. <laughs> Do you not eat ham? No, I, I eat ham, but I just don't think there's going to be a pill that's the size of a ham that yeah. you slice. Well, that's what it is. It's going to have all the nutrients you, meet, you need, and then you're going to do like do you thin think deli slices. Do you think that's because humanity needs to cut its food, even if it's a pill? I think that it's so is interesting. Is that what God because you, intended or you, the aliens want to watch? You look at evolution, mm. and, and you see the how— movie? Yes, the Ivan exactly. Movie. <laughs> yes, it's wonderful. Duchovny. So funny. Orlando. <laughs> Julianne Moore. <laughs> the funniest actress of all time. Look, I love her. <laughs> Wouldn't say she's a comic great, <laughs> but would love to have her on the show. Uh, but I, <laughs> I talk think, about it. I think evolution. You roll know, by roll. <laughs> <laughs> how funny do you think you were in this one? <laughs> what do you think was funny about it? <laughs> Tell me about Safe. How funny was this? <laughs> I think in evolution. Apes grew the opposable thumb so they could they could hold utensils. Okay, and so that they could cut their own food. Because who you ever uh, you don't have a knife and so you just like stab something with a fork and you try to tear it with your with your uh, with your choppers. Like, yeah. yeah, with the old choppers. Yeah. you know the choppers. Oh yeah, I'm familiar with your choppers. You know, and yeah. it's like you're you're like man, I wish there was a knife around here. Well, yeah, <laughs> boy, we've really run out of things to say. <laughs> Boy, I wish there was a knife around here. Uh, the end. The end. Ba, ba, da, ba, 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 ba. Credits. <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang is going Why off the Why did you tell me this episode was the best episode of the show? <laughs> they, they ran out of steam real quick. Real quick. Boy, about 10 minutes they, in. They started really intensely, very big picture, aliens, God, <laughs> and ended up with like a ham-sized pill that you cut and not and having a knife. knives exist, <laughs> Ed. Uh, wait, we're Ed gonna- who? Uh, at TV. Uh, mm. We're getting towards the end of the year, Jason, uh, and we're getting towards... How did, did you make a resolution this past year? I don't remember. That's the thing. I don't remember the resolutions yeah. a, a week after I made them. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I decided to do something, didn't I? Did Maybe you make this one? year make a resolution to remember your resolution. Shut the fuck up. Interesting. <laughs> did you make one this I year? I did not, no. I'm not a New Year's resolution person not, because yeah. I don't keep them. And then it's just another thing in my life that I'm disappointed by. What do you wish you could change about yourself? Hmm... I wish I could procrastinate less. Yeah. Genuine, genuine. Uh, uh, Is that genu- in your work? Real. Is that in your yeah. relationships? No, my work. In, or, yeah. In, no, in like things that are, I guess it ends up being evidenced in work more than anywhere else. But like things that I perceive as I don't want to do them. Work, like homework, basically. Yes. I think that that's the uh, uh, problem with the life to... in, in the arts yep. is that we, we get into these things where work is so fun that we go, well, we only want to do the fun part of it. Yes. And the not fun part of it is very real. And our lizard brains are just constantly saying like, no, 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 just do the, the fun go things. Go do the those fun, fun things. things more. Yeah. The fun things are fun. Yeah. Um, you have not. Is there w- something you would you would change? But is there something you would uh, like to resolve to change <sighs> here on this podcast that we will hold each other accountable for? How I about wish, that? I wish I had a smaller penis. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just too. It's rough. Yeah, everyone wanting it. <laughs> Yep. It's the perfect size. I'm not saying it's too big. Sure, sure. It's just the perfect size. Yeah. So rather than have it be perfect, you'd prefer it be smaller. I prefer it just to be smaller. Yeah. I don't want it to be too big. No, 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 no. That would be uncomfortable. Yeah, I I, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. You know, (laughs) mine is just too big. (laughs) You know, and uh, I wish it could be perfect size. Right, yeah. I would not want smaller. When you're saying too big, you're talking four or five inches, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yep. It's huge. And that's Comedians like, are talking about their dicks, finally! Yeah! We did Everybody's it. got a dick! Do you, uh, Except let, for women. <laughs> okay, good observation, yeah, I guess. You know, I just wanted to make sure people knew that I knew that women didn't have dicks. Do you ever wish that you could be a musician? Yes. What would you play? Do you play I anything? I play drums. You, you do play drums? I do play drums. I had no idea. Is that right? Yes. No, I do play drums. That's funny. I thought you were asking that because really? I would like to be. That you have is a set? Like in that way that, yes. In that you way have a kit? That, I do. In that way that I feel like all comedians want to be musicians and all musicians want to be comedians. Right. Um, yes. Like I grew up playing in bands and like, yeah, oh, I, oh my God. Well, there's a musicality to your comedy. Thank you. Uh, it is. It, <laughs> It is uh, interesting that comedians want to be musicians, I think primarily because you go see bands, and man, they don't have to work very hard. No. You know what I mean? You know, it's like two two it's, hours on stage. Well, it's two hours on stage, but all they're doing is like going, you know. And Who are you going to see? 
<laughs> I'm just curious, who was that? I'm going to see Alexander's Ragtime Good Time Band. Okay, cool. <laughs> And the corn dog, corn dogs. <laughs> um, they don't have to do good stage patter. They can say anything, and people will laugh. You ever notice that at a concert? Oh yeah, because people are awkward. I mean, the 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 audience is like nervous for the talking portion. Yes, because and and all they have to do is say something like, uh, "This one's dedicated to my buddy uh, that I grew up with. It's called Hey Fuck You." They also, they, <laughs> I think, musicians need to stop doing this thing where like people will start like yelling out stuff while they're in between songs kind of tuning or whatever. Yeah. And the person will be kind of tuning and then absentmindedly kind of like, and then somebody will be like, bah, 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 and they'll be like, wait, what? Yeah. And then now we have to like be quiet. For, for the person in the so f- that, front row? So that the, some, they can be like, wait, what? What? Oh. Oh, 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 yeah, no, we're not gonna, we're not gonna do that. I or, remember when I saw Radiohead and they did that. And I was like, why on earth would you be indulging this? I think concerts, everyone should be silent. I think there should be no reaction from fans. Whoa. At all. And not, I think, wait, I don't like that. And I think people should play the music, put down their instruments after every song, and then stare at the crowd for a good two, three minutes. Okay. I'm on board for the staring at the end. <laughs> right. Everything else I don't like. Uh, I would not. Can you imagine going to a show and having there be no laughter? Yeah, I can, actually. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact. So you, yeah. guys, you guys stopped doing live shows, huh? <laughs> um uh, uh, I, I, I find audiences to be so fascinating. I saw the war on drugs at the Greek last week, uh, or uh, quite a while, a while ago. ago, actually. Now, yes, sorry. Um, and it was. I, I, spent, I wanted to go to that show. Why didn't you invite me? It was great. Who'd you go with? Uh, I had 11 extra tickets that I just did not use, and I went <laughs> alone. <laughs> I just wanted to really I stretch out. I sat in a row I alone, lay down across weeping. every seat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I had as much fun watching the audience as watching the show because the audience was like all – bros just like freaking out over how much like the guy was shredding on stage and it was the mellowest of shredding i saw the national a few who were guests on this very program of course Mm -hmm. uh and uh i may or may not have talked about it on the show that they were on (laughs) okay (laughs) but uh i saw them uh a while ago and uh two things there were two women taking duck-faced selfies in the very front row with the band as the back Ground throughout throughout the last five songs. Really, like they they didn't do it because for, they couldn't get it right. Yeah, constantly like right? like taking a, a flash photo. By the way, of the band with them like doing like doing the peace sign and oh. doing duck face selfies, and then looking at it and going, "Oh no, no, let's do it again." Constantly flashing in Matt's eyes. So that was one thing. Mm, but then there was a dude. I don't like it. There was a dude who had the longest ponytail, and the National are not. Uh, a dance band, certainly, no. but he was out there acting like it was the Red Hot Chili Peppers going. Bow, so bow, that, bow, bow. that is a dance band in your mind, Red Hots. <laughs> well, I mean, they have a funky bass. Yeah. <laughs> But he w- he was out there whipping his ponytail around. I just want to let the listeners know that Scott has now done a bass line and a guitar line. <laughs> with his mouth. So let's Put make those, those together, songs, everybody. And there is a really good song in there. Yeah, there is. He was whipping his ponytail around and then doing doing funk dances. It was very weird. To the national? To the national. To the national's very, very languid rock and roll? To the point where I started taking video of him because I just wanted to, <laughs> to prove that I could do it. But then I felt bad because everyone behind me, and believe me, when I go see a concert, there's why a not, lot of people behind me. Sure, sure. Why not just r- turn around? Point it at yourself, do a duck face, and get him in the background because oh, that's apparently allowable. J Dog, I wish you were there with me. I had so many extra tickets. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Oh, too bad. Uh, what do is you, yes? I, I was going to say, did you ever wish you were a musician? Did you play an instrument? No. I play. Yeah, I played guitar. I played in oh, bands. Okay. Actually, there was a point where I decided to give up. How being, do we not know this? And why don't we start a comedy bang bang rock and roll? Oh band? my god. What are we doing uh, with our lives we if we Paul don't start Rust, a band? Paul Rust to play the bass? He's already in a band. Oh, He's got a baby. He's, he, you know. All right, fine. Shoot him down. Uh, there's got to be someone else who plays bass. Brian Husky. Brian Husky plays bass? Plays bass very well. He was in a band called Bicycle Face that was like a touring band. I did not know that. Yes. This is incredible. Oh, yeah. Uh, I played Largo on my last gig ever, and I broke two strings in the opening song. Really? And I was like, fuck, what am I even what, doing? What, what old Largo, I assume? Yeah. Fairfax old, Largo? Yeah. Um, what was the band? 
Uh, Lave Los Manos was our name. Who else was in it? Uh, my friend Doug Bins, who is currently in North Korea. Oh, no. In uh, North Korea? Uh, yeah, he's in North Korea. That's the one to be in, right? Or South Korea. So, no, he's in South Korea. Wait, Sorry. do you really not know the Koreas? <laughs> I got, look, I'm concentrating on facts right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, why is he in South Korea? Uh, he uh, uh, went to work there. Cool. And, and that's uh, what broke up the band, so you decided to become a comedian? No, I broke two, two strings, and that broke up the band. Got it. Um, no, but I was doing comedy at the same time. Because you were shredding so hard? <laughs> I guess. What kind of music? Uh, like pop, uh, poppy, Elvis costello Graham Parker type stuff, but with, like acu- with acoustic guitars. Uh-huh. Harmonies. Mm-hmm. Just like, you and Doug Bin? Me and Doug Bins were the Bins. two regulars, and then we would have a rotating cast of people playing drums or playing keyboards, it. saxophone, stuff I like love that. Love it. Yeah. I feel like we could get a comedy bang bang rock and roll band. We could. We we should we anyone we should. anyone who has ever been on the show before. And that includes musicians. John Gamberling was a lead singer in a band. Whoa. And his band had a song on a soundtrack for some movie. What? I remember that being a like thing. Like Drop Dead Gorgeous or something? It was like it was like a thousand years ago. I don't know why I'm thinking of that movie. I don't know why you did either. <laughs> Denise Richards? Yeah. <laughs> Why? How did you get Drop Dead Gorgeous? Though? I was thinking of soundtracks, and that one popped in my mind because What's I own the number it for one some soundtrack. Reason. You own the soundtrack to I Drop do. Dead Gorgeous. There must be. I there was a time in my life when I would go to record stores, and if something was like five dollars or less, you just and it had get one it. song that I liked, I would get it. Yeah. Huh? Was that time last week? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, are you okay? That's how I laugh now. Oh, that's you like great. it? I love it. <laughs> By the way, you should do that. <laughs> I do should. that. You should start doing that in other shows. Just to see <laughs> that. you heard Scott's laugh has changed. He's re- really changed. I love it. Yeah. Oh, I'm on board. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We should start a band though. What would what would we be called? CBB All Stars is definitely there, based on Ringo's. Uh, mm. What is Ringo's band? All star band, yeah, I believe Ringo it's called Star. Ringo's All Star. All Star, All Star with two R's. I, I assume so. One would have to assume. Um, it's like him. It's Joe Walsh, his brother-in-law, Joe Walsh. How, Howard Jones, I believe, was in it at some no. point. Yeah, I, I think. No one ever is to blame Howard Jones? Yeah, I believe so. Oh, I used to love that song. That's like a song from high school dances or junior high school dances, maybe? Yeah, for me, high school, yeah. Yeah, uh, and wowie, that song Wait, was just sad to me. Do you remember the first song that you ever slow danced to? With, I don't. You don't? I do. What? Time After Time. Cindy Lauper. That's a good one. Oh, such good memories. That's a, that song is continues to be heartbreaking to me. It's a wonderful song made even better every time I hear it. I think back to my junior high uh, auditorium yeah. and that first dance and uh, that I ever slow danced to. And I didn't know how to act. Totally. And uh, so. Uh, who did, Do you remember who you danced with? I do, yes. Yeah. I don't want to say her well, name. That's okay. Uh, to protect the uh, integrity of was it a teacher our relationship yes was it it was was it a teacher Mr. Browningfield (laughs) (laughs) he just he decided to let it all out at that dance and say this is what I'm about (laughs) (laughs) and he chose you that's exciting I do have to say and I believe I may have talked about this on programs before that uh, we had a weird high school where uh, teachers ended up in relationships with students. And there was one uh, that's Teachers plural? Yes. There's one there's one that was in the news that was my junior high science teacher who then became a high school science teacher and we didn't know why. And we found out it was because he got into a relationship with a junior high student and then followed her to the high school so he could keep an eye on her. What? Yeah. Really weird. A junior high school student is like 12 or 13 years old, yes. right? Yes. Pretty bad. So, He's arrested, thank goodness. Oh, okay. I was going to ask if they were still together. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, who knows, like, though? Yeah, that know. is awful. It's really bad. So it, keep an eye. Oh, it, it makes I you think like that it. if you have children, uh, and I pray that you do, Jason. So do I. I want to see little ones of you I do, too. Around. Listen. The Bambinos. I, I would love it. I would love it. Let's have children on the exact same day. By the way. Nothing would make me happier than for us to have children at the same time so that they could be best friends. Let's make sure that we have uh, sex with our respective partners on the same night in Let's the same call. room. Let's call each other in the same room, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll not know which baby is ours. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What are you and suggesting? And they'll come out and we'll be like, I don't know, I'll take this one. Oh, so you're saying we both have sex with each of our respective significant yes, others. just to make sure to up the chances. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Just like. Sure. 
Sure. So we just we'll each take a pop in each other. Ew. Ew. Oh, that is gross. It is gross, but wouldn't it be great to have kids on the exact same day? I think it would be terrific. I yeah, just that, said well, that. that would be that would that what is, is the delight. dream because someone also, is going through exactly what you're going through on the on exact a same daily day. basis on a day. But you, you, we could call each other and go. Oh my God! Get uh, ready. Th- stopped crying at night yep. today. I just How, got a full it, night's sleep. I assume you did too. <laughs> of course I did. Yep. They were born on the exact, on same, the exact day. same schedule. <laughs> That would be so good. I it, guess you know we would what? Have to- I don't understand why more people don't just meet all the other parents that have kids born on the same day and make those people your friends. Exactly. Because you'd be going through the exact same stuff. Would you do that locally or would you do it globally or uh, think globally, act locally? Okay, that would be good. There's got to be <laughs> when you're in the hospital. Yeah. Uh, and and your partner is about to have a baby. You must chum it up with some of the other people in the oh, hospital, right? I'm assuming hospital waiting rooms are chum city. <laughs> chum and city. Like, and like, I'm talking sh- about like, like sharks, like bloody chum. meat, like bloody meat in the uh-huh. water. Just like who wants a baby? You yeah. want a baby? <laughs> <laughs> want a baby? <laughs> We're gonna need a bigger boat. Listen, guys, what we need is to us for us to. I need to find the woman. Yes, and you and so that's you, key for you. That's I huge. have the woman. You have the woman. I'm just waiting on you, buddy. So, and I appreciate your patience. I really do. I'm, <laughs> and I've I'm, always said that's what me and Cool Up are waiting yeah, for. Yeah, you have. You've always said that in writing. Um, when you write me your letters, <laughs> <laughs> yes, longhand, beautiful, oh, beautiful letters. Oh, to you, I'm telling you, Jason, we have to publish those letters. <laughs> oh, Griffin they're and, like the Groucho Griffin letters. and Sabine le- letters. <laughs> Oh, we're having fun. We're having fun. We're just pals, guys. That would be great, though. I mean, can you imagine just taking our kids Welcome to- Welcome to Just to, Pals Radio. Just Pals, dripping milk. Uh, can you imagine taking our kids to kindergarten on the very first day and then imagine, watching them go off into kindergarten and then turning, turning to them, each other yeah. and crying and, yeah. and like having a sharing a hug and being like, buddy, only you know what I'm going through yeah. right now. Yeah, high-fiving each other. High-fiving each because other. Because we taught them how to do that on the exact same day. Imagine them going to junior high and meeting a teacher. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh boy, I don't like this part. It really it. makes you, but that's where I was going. It really makes you think about like, well, why, and, why let your kid do anything? Oh yeah, why, why, why well, let him I, out of your sight? It does make me understand, like conceptually, why we've got a generation of like pampered, helicopter pampered helicopter parents. parents. Yeah, well, the parents aren't pampered. No, pampered kids. I would love to pamper some parents out there, by pam- the way. Oh, Welcome d- to Pampered has- Parents. Hashtag Driven diaper milk. life. <laughs> hashtag corn dog, pampers, corn dog. Pampers are a diaper. So we're living <laughs> so pampered so parents. Double meaning here. Diaper life. Uh, <laughs> like chum in the water. <laughs> We've got a lot of like cats in, the waiting room. in this episode <laughs> vying for title. <laughs> vying for t-shirts. Uh, is that a shirt? Yeah. By the way, is that a shirt? Shirts available in the store right <laughs> is now. Is that right? Yes, Shame right. on you. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> Is that a shirt? <laughs> it is not. <laughs> it um, is, not. is wait? Is I want that pill a shirt? Not yet. Oh, that's a good one. Got to write that down. I want yeah, that pill. I want uh, that pill. Trying desperately to come up with shirts to fit our monthly T-shirt uh, quota for. Did the- you guys ever do? It's been a while. Uh, I don't know. No, I guess we haven't. Or so it's that's been. A, it, oh, yeah, those yeah. are good. Those are good. Uh, good. We we do have Calvin's Twins uh, t-shirts in the store now. Uh, what is that? I missed that one. You don't know the Calvin's Twins? They no. were fascinating guests. This is the show where we talk to interesting people. By the way, coming up after the break, we'll be speaking to someone in the tourism industry. Oh, great. Uh, they are. Uh, I'd hor- love to take a trip. Horse fight promoters. You'd love to take a trip. Got where it. do you want to go? I don't know. Where have you been? What's the most exotic locale you've ever been? That I've in, ever been in, which you've in, ever been. Um, uh, I uh, exotic. I went to Bora Bora once on a vacation. No, that was beautiful. Where is that even? It's like in the middle know, of the ocean or yeah, something. It's, in, it's like a tiny island in the middle of the ocean. Great, great. And beautiful. how was it? Oh, very relaxing. Did you sun your buns? I sunned them buns. <laughs> Let me check out those buns. Let me see. Uh, check out these buns. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I just had to take my diaper off and then uh, <laughs> see some of those pampered sorry. parents. Yeah. Uh, I call soft, your buns pampered parents, uh, yeah, by the way. Soft little tushy. Um, anyway, uh, I went anyway. to Bora Bora, but I thought, you know, I've, I've traveled around, but let's I would travel, like. Let's travel. Tell you what. Where you should we I go? Travel, where should we go? We, we should travel the world, meaning six of the seven continents. Great. We should travel the world and uh, we should uh, have sex with our respective partners in hotel rooms around the world. Okay. Hoping for that seed to flower uh, on the exact same day. And, Why six of seven? Uh, I don't want to go to Antarctica. Probably. Oh, I would. You would? Really? Yep. Like Metallica? Wait, where have you not been? 
Uh, I've never been to Africa. Uh, I've never. No, I have been to Asia. So I get. Uh, uh, you got to. Well, I've, I've been, been to, to Central Australia. Central America, not South America. Got so. it. Got it. Got it. Uh, so I guess those those are the three that I've never been in. Okay. What about you? I think I think I'm similar, although I've never been to Australia. Yeah. Uh, got to go to Australia, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we should just travel around the world together. Let's 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 do. Uh, Speaking a, of procrastination, let's tour our rock and roll band. <laughs> let's tour go. our rock and roll band all over the world. All over the world, uh, playing to no one, playing to silence. Hopefully, I feel and then like we'll stare at them. I feel like if we were to try and mount a tour, comedy bank podcast fans mm-hmm. would come to see that just to be like, just to be like, this is we got to see what this is. <laughs> we just got to check it out. How dare even they for five minutes? How dare How they? How are they even charging five dollars for this? <laughs> I can't believe they encouraged us to bring things to throw at them. <laughs> We're going to mount a tour as we mount our oh, respective yeah. partners and then finally hope that happens. Tour babies. Tour babies. Tour babies. I would love to have a tour baby I with would you. love to have a tour baby with That's, you. That, well, that is our band. I'm tour being babies. honest. We should have children at, on the same day. I would, and I know this started as I, a bit, I need but you, I would like to now I would really say I would love to have children because at a lot the of same our, exact our, time. A lot of our friends are having babies. Sure, and or have having, had. And they're having them a year before we ever will, two yeah. years before we ever will. And they're having these experiences, and we're losing them all. Yep. We don't see them as often. No. And so it would be great to do it with someone right around the same time. I think it would be amazing. I need you to get on it, buddy. I'm working on it. I'm working real hard. Well, what are you doing? What are your nothing, steps? Nothing. I'm procrastinating. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. See, I got to not procrastinate. I got, listen. Who, who procrastinates when it comes to sex? That's the fun thing. Well, no, the, it's, not, it's not the sex. It's finding the person to like to have a baby with. Who cares? Just have a baby with anyone. Oh, that's okay. Now that's an interesting move. Seriously. Maybe just forego, forego the, the concept relationship of a relationship. Of it. Who cares? Have it with anyone. You think I should? Okay, so that's interesting. So now, so I, you think I should just start raw dogging ladies until I have a baby? <laughs> yes, of course. Okay. Uh, with their permission, of course. Consensual raw you dogging. Get down on one knee and say, may I raw dog may you? I, yes. <laughs> with the express intent to have a child. <laughs> and we, Oh, maybe I should start asking ladies like, you know, like not just like, hey, are you still out? Are you up? What up? What's going on? I should be like, where are you at on your cycle? <laughs> exactly. Are, hey, are you, you on? You want to get a drink? Where are you at in your cycle? <laughs> Have you peed on a stick that says if you're oven or not? <laughs> Can I take that basil temp, babe? <laughs> it's interesting that women are oven and they have babies in the oven. Yeah. Oven in that oven, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. That, I got that. That's not bad. Oven in the oven. Loving in that oven? Hashtag diaper life. Hashtag pampered parents. <laughs> corn dog, corn dog. I don't know that we've gotten there yet. Yep. I'm not sure. We'll swing back around to oh, it I'm at some point during the it. episode. All right. We need to take a break. Uh, when you we, need to take a break. Yes, I do need to take a break. I just This has been too exciting for me. I um, would just like to say I would keep going, but Scott's making us take a break. I uh, Hey, man. Hey, Nong, man. <laughs> you said that as if we've never said it before. Hey, as if you're the alien. Nong. Come Coming down Man. to earth. Oh, uh, what do you mean? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. I, I, Jason got what do you mean? very frightened right now. <laughs> what do you mean? I, I'm Jason. <laughs> You're Jeffrey. I, I am. Oh, right. okay. We need to take a break. When we come back, we'll have uh, someone from the tourism industry, and we'll talk about our uh, desire to travel all of the six continents and perhaps even and the seventh. Places where it's legal to, like, raw dog people and get sure. them pregnant. Of course. Yeah, we'll be right back with more Comedy Bang Bang after this. <laughs> hey, I mentioned them before the show, but I'm glad they're back. They're back. Squarespace, ugh, one of our oldest Oldest and best sponsors. We're happy to have them. Uh, let me ask you a question. Are you ready to start your new business? Everyone has a new business, right? You should. If you haven't started a business yet, what are you waiting for? Start your business. Maybe you're not doing it because you're like, oh, I would need a website. Well, guess what? You can start your business and you can make your business stand out with Squarespace. What is Squarespace, you ask? Okay. If you're about to make a website, all you do is you you hop onto Squarespace They have beautiful templates created by world-class designers, all right? They do all the work for you. Squarespace makes it easy to turn your idea into a new and unique website. You want your website to pop, baby. You want people to be flipping through websites going, not that one, not that one, not that one. What is this? Look at this website. Beautiful. It's almost as if this was done by a world-class designer. It was? 
Amaz- I'll buy everything from them. I'll read every blog post. That's what you want in a website. Make it catch the eye. You can showcase your work. You can put up a blog. You can publish content. You can even, through Squarespace, sell products and services of all client, all kind, <laughs> all Richard Kleind, Kevin Kleind. Uh, you can sell anything. They have uh, uh, templates for that where they have online stores. You can do it all through Squarespace with just a few clicks. You can customize anything from look and feel to settings and products using those beautiful templates created by the world-class designers. Not to mention everything is optimized for mobile. So, uh, you know, if, if it's on your desktop, it'll do that. And then if it's on mobile, it'll just translate right there. And that's, you don't have to do anything with that. That's just right out of the box. You can use Squarespace's analytics to help your business grow in real time with Bill Maher. And best of all, there is nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. So you don't, they take care of all of that. And if you do have a question, Squarespace is award winning. They're winning a lot of awards at Squarespace. What is going on there? Wow. Uh, They have award winning 24 7 customer support and they are there to help. The future is coming. Make it brighter with Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you are ready to launch, use the offer code BANGBANG to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com, offer code BANGBANG. <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang, we're back here with Jason Manzukis, And uh, during the break, we were talking about uh, babies and, and uh, whether they do shit or not. And uh, we're talking about uh, dogs. They certainly do. And yeah. uh, we have to pick it up. And uh, isn't that weird? If you were an alien coming down to Earth and you were looking at, at humans, you would be like, oh, wow, these dogs have all the power. They're making humans pick up their own shit. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Does that, but in every other way, I don't think, I think you'd pretty quickly be like, uh, I don't think these dogs. It's a mixed message. You have to agree for the aliens. You know what? We're, we're given mixed messages. That is for sure. Yeah. And they, the aliens would have every right in couples counseling to bring it up and be like, I just don't know what you want. They'd be like, I don't know who I'm supposed to come down and say, take me to your leader to the dogs, the humans. What what do I do? I get it. And they would just fly away. By the way, I'd rather talk to those dogs right now than the leader. (laughs) Don't know what you're talking about. All right, let's get to our next guest. I'm talking uh, Tang, baby. Ah, uh, dripping milk. Uh, corn dog, corn dog. Hashtag <laughs> diap life. Living that hashtag diap life. Uh, let's get to our next guest. Uh, this is, of course, the show where we talk to interesting people. And thank God, um, too. Thank God, too. Because thank can God. you imagine listening to a podcast where there are no interesting people? On uh, it? Can you imagine pro- living in a world in which you didn't have access to interesting people's conversations? Where, where it was just like, can you imagine going to work every day and just Here. having the same old, same old conversation, <laughs> then listening to a show? where those conversations are broadcast? Here you are, doing your laundry, mm-hmm. uh, on the commute, whatever you're doing right now. Whatever, you're like a real dumbo. <laughs> you're, you're a real cheesehead. You're a real chump. Here you are. You're a chump swallower. Living that chump life, and you have access right now to someone very interesting. You're welcome. You must be very excited right now. <laughs> That we have dispensed with all of our preamble, and we're finally getting to the interesting Well, that's people. the thing is, and I think a lot of people, I wonder, how many people fast forward to the guest? I wonder. That's how interesting. How many people do how not listen to How many people Mark Maron the, it up? Yeah, do not listen to bang this, bang? To this more, part. The, more the than I would portion. like. More than I would like. Just go straight to that guest. Uh, he is in the tourism industry, which is a fascinating industry. Uh, our friend Randy Travels uh, is in there uh, of Travel Agency, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, so we'll, we'll uh, see exactly. So, is this now answer this question just yes. because I've heard like whisperings of this? Sure. Is this turning into a travel podcast? <laughs> it may be. Yes. <laughs> Why not? Uh, I'm just you know, wondering only because you can only do eight and a half years of in one the thing. Earwolf for- offices are talking and they are worried <laughs> that this is like I heard Rick Steves is doing a show here now. <laughs> Uh, let's get to him. Let, let there be no, let us tarry no further. Uh, he is in the tours, tourism industry. Please welcome Cameron McGonagall. Hello, Cameron. That's right. Hello, lads. It's great to be here. It is great to have Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. That's right. I am in the tourist business. That's, That's right. Charming I dialect am. do you have? Or accent? Is it a dialect or an accent? Oh, it's a burr or a brogue. Ah, okay. Or a dialect or an accent, you can call it whatever you like. I'm from Scotland. Oh, it's wow. very authentic to Scotland. <laughs> well, of course it is, because that's where I'm <laughs> from. He's Scottish, so how could it not be? <laughs> of course. Are you from? Everyone's dialect is authentic to where they're from. I are think. you Scottish or are you just from Scotland? Oh, no, I'm Scottish. I'm all the way full Scottish. Okay, that's because right. I know, you know, uh, there are, you know, Asian people who live everywhere in every country. Oh, no, we don't have Asians in Scotland. <laughs> you don't? <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> 
How weird. No. Are you sure you can't about that? find one. I've never seen I mean, I've been there all my life. I've never seen one. There wasn't there as part of a tourist trip or something like that. And then at the end of the trip, it's like, all right, well, you know, very, very nice. Thank you so much. I'm back to Asia. <laughs> and all yeah, that. Off you go. That, off well, you go now. That's nice. Yeah, one Scottish it, person uh, ushers them onto the plane. That's right. Well, we've got a guy whose job that is at the airport to just <laughs> sort of say, Asian thank wrangler. you very much. And that's, you know, you, now that's it. you got to go. <laughs> and it's been nice to have you here and all that. I mean, it's not rude, but it's no, like, no. you do have to go. Yeah, you know. sure. They do have to go. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but, I mean, it's like, you know, it's a lot of Scots in Scotland. Has that been the same person for years? Oh, that guy's you... been doing it for years. Nobody can be polite and firm to the Asians <laughs> like this guy can. Nobody <laughs> can. And then, what, like, if he goes on vacation, they've got somebody else to do it, and it's not as good. Really? That's so right. how, many, how much vacation does he get a year? That guy... <laughs> It gets it gets like a standard like a month in summertime. Oh, oh wow! Or it gets a month standard. in summertime. Sure it is. So for that's somebody like my, that's, that's like right. uh, that's like approaching August lint levels. Oh, I don't know how that is. So for <laughs> you, as someone who works in tourism, for right. like people that have a month, month and a half vacation, that's got to be that's like, like shooting fish in a barrel. That's got to be great. For oh, it's you. great. Of course it is. I mean, the entire month of August, like all of Edinburgh, is just packed with tourists. It is really, and you don't get them a lot. I mean, you get a little bit in like uh, June. And uh, what's the other one? What's that one that comes between June and August? I don't know if you have it here. Ju- but we've it's got July. A month. We do have. We've it got here, that yeah. month as well, and it comes right between June and August. Sure. And you get Always. some tourists. I, I think it does. I mean, it did this year. And anyway, you it's, do get some tourists, and that. I don't think it's like Thanksgiving that falls on a different day each year. I, I don't know what that is. Pretty, you don't know what Thanksgiving. Oh, I don't know okay. what that is. That is. That's an American holiday. It's an American, it's an American holiday. holiday. Still, he's a human being. I would know. <laughs> Things. Do you know traditional other Scottish holidays? That's right. I guess I don't. What are some? What are some? Holidays? Robbie Burns Day. Do you know Robbie Burns Day? Do you have that one? That's you a just full call one. it Happy Burns Day. Robbie, Robbie Burns, Burns, Burns Day. Day. When a body meets a body, coming through the rye. Robbie Burns. <laughs> do you not know that one? No. Is that a federal holiday? It's a bank holiday, is right. You can't do any banking on that day. You mm. show up at the bank, they say, "Go home." It's Robbie Burns Day. So where were you? They're working at the bank, and they tell you to go the home. The entire bank staff is at the bank. Oh, so they don't have the day off. No, they don't. No, you don't give them the day because somebody's got to tell people to go home. Oh, and okay. so it's, they stand at the door, just like the guy who's telling Are all they the Asians to get firm? on the plane. No, they're not polite at all because to show up at the bank on Robbie Burns Day is an insult to the national poet, and it's and it, you've got to be firm. You've got right. to say, "Go home away with you." It's Robbie Burns Day. No, <laughs> it's no not. Banking. It's interesting. It's not Robert Burns Day. Oh, well, some people might call it that. It's Robert Robbie Burns, Burns Day, Day which is a little bit diminutive to him. To Robbie? A masculine. Oh, I think he'd like to. Really? Oh, that's you right. think he likes to be called a nasty little boy or something? <laughs> well, maybe. Maybe a, 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 once in a while. Does that come through in his poetry? On a poetry? Friday night. Oh, I think a lot of his poems are very randy. <laughs> I think they are, yeah. There's a little sure, bit. You should have called him Randy Burns. <laughs> well, yeah. Randy Robbie Burns. You might have. But uh, no, Robbie Burns. Burns was a great poet, and he wrote a lot, a lot of great poems, and a lot of them, uh, you know, if you if you read the subtext, they're all about. Have you memorized sex. any of those poems? <laughs> <laughs> we have. We I will say, and you don't know the show, I'm assuming, but we do, have quite, we, few, we do have quite a few. We do have quite a few poets on. Is this a poetry yeah, podcast? We had an, I wish I'd known. We had a Irish travel slash poet. We had an Irish poet on once. Did you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you think of the Irish? I don't like the Irish at all. I mean, once again, they're welcome to come over in the sure. high tourist season, sure. of course. Have okay. a look around, and then it's time to go. Just a look around. The, just have a look around, maybe buy some, you know, a tartan bonnet or something like that, and then it's time to get back on the fucking bus or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> get back to Ireland. That's all. I mean, it not to be a, rude. It sounds a lot like y- you, as someone who works in tourism, are very excited to get rid of people. <laughs> well, I mean, you can overstay. You're welcome. Everyone That's knows true. that. Yeah. For sure. Right? I mean, you're welcome for a little while. Visitors like fish. Visitors like fish. That's exactly Exactly right. I'm just saying that visitors that Robbie like Byrne fish. said that. The that band. Robbie Byrne said visitors that. Visitors like the band Fish. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> visitors, you know, I don't know if you're joking, but visitors do like oh, fish. Oh, I every it's time true. I have visitors, they're like, "Will you please put on pictures of nectar?" <laughs> Oh, but I'm talking about the animal. Like, do you know the animal fish? I don't know if you have it here, but in, in no, we, our yeah, waters, yeah, we there have, are yeah, they swim they're around. Fi- that's right. You got they shit in the water. Oh well, that's true. I suppose they do. That's true. Yeah, they're yeah, like they're like uh, hamburgers in the, in the future. <laughs> What's that now? Eh, don't, <laughs> don't worry about it. 
hamburgers in the future. I you think, think hamburgers in the future are going to shit? Yeah. I think they are. Future burgers, uh, we future, call them. Yeah, are going to, well, all food. I th- you seem particularly interested in hamburgers, <laughs> but I think we talked about it vis-a-vis all just, food. The picture in my mind. Shit and come. The picture in my right. mind of like the, the bun kind of squeezing uh-huh. and contracting right. as it shits out the back. Sure, but you could say the same about like if you were to like hold a carrot. You know, and squeeze it in the middle. That was funny. Like it's. Could you make a carrot take a shit? Because like. Also, I think a carrot is coming. It's not shitting. You know what I mean? Like a well, carrot the would. Come would come out of the top. Yeah, I guess. The, like I, you, I feel like the shit squeeze, would have to come out the green. I'm sorry. The thing. You squeeze, Cameron, I'm sorry about this, but we have to squeeze it. Oh, it. So right. You stroke it to make it come. It's a carrot. Right. I, I apologize about it. They grow in a hole in the ground, don't they? They do. Yeah, That's right. they really do. And yeah. then once you pull out the carrot, I mean, it's just the right size for a human penis. Yeah. yeah. And just, I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> yeah. a, so you're saying do. there's a human penis sized hole in the ground? Once you pull the carrot out. Sure. Which, yeah. We have also had someone on the show. About holes in the in the ground. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, you've covered a lot of these topics already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have anything new to tell us, <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. No. Uh, what, uh, you, you work so in the tour. Do, do you work right. for a specific company or No, I don't. No. Yes. And I, I'm here to promote myself because I don't belong to a giant like tourist company or anything like that. I am an independent businessman. I've got right. my own uh, company. Small business. A small business. That's right. How and many what, employees do you it, have? Well, it, it varies, but it's like um, I'm the only one that's always there. And then I've got every once in a while some people that help me out. And, not, and whatnot. Sure. What I do is I give ghost tours of Edinburgh. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's right. That's fun. That can it's be a lot, a lot of fun. Of fun. Oh, we, sure. we have those here in the States as well. Have you got ghost tours here? We do, yeah. I didn't know you had them. People, uh, you, you go to places that are considered to be haunted. Right. Uh, that have spooky ghost stories, and sometimes oh, the, right. the tour people tell stories about the beheadings and, and Oh, the that's right. That's brilliant. That's what we do as well. Yeah. Yeah, but our, but our ghost tour, it's not, it's not places that are like, I was, what did you say, supposed Supposed to be haunted. These places are haunted. I'm telling you, there's ghosts. There's ghosts all over the right. city of Edinburgh. It's, it's an old city. It's fun. Yeah, exactly. But no, it's, I mean, I'm telling fun. you that it's ghosts. And there's people, because like, people have been living there for a long time, since like Roman times. And so there's a lot of people have lived there and a lot of people have died there. And all of them have turned into ghosts. It's nothing but ghosts. Okay, that's not specific. All of them have turned into ghosts. That's right. Every single person who's ever now died that, in the city of Edinburgh. That might be specific to Scotland. That's a ghost. That would be an overwhelming amount of ghosts, I would think. It's yeah. ridiculous. I mean, it, it's frankly, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Because how? What percentage of people turn into ghosts in other countries? Like in the United States, I think a States, very small percent. You think it's like one percent? One to three percent, I would and say. And why do you think it is? It's because they they have an unfinished business. That's what a lot. I of would people assume. Think about do you ghosts. think that's the case that, that everybody right. in Scotland has unfinished business? I think that's probably right. Yeah. yeah, because it's hard to get things done in Scotland. You know, the weather is always changing. Sure, it's and like, there's like know. a month and a half of vacation. That's right. <laughs> I would have done it if the sun was out and then it started yeah. to rain. I couldn't get right. it done. So you think a lot of ghosts are hanging around for sunny days to get stuff done? That right. They weren't able to get done I think that's life. about right. You know, you need to fix the shutters and you need to get up out, up there and rethatch the roof and whatnot. You so just you think get to a lot life. of ghosts are doing manual labor around the house? Well, There's a lot of little projects <laughs> and whatnot. You Do know. you ever wake up and walk out to your house and go, oh my God, someone fixed the shutters in the night? Yeah, well, that's what they do. And, and what it would be then is a, a former resident of your home who had died, right? right? Uh-huh. And it's now a ghost and it's got sort of this like to-do list yep. of things they've got to get to. Are they try- Can they do it themselves? Can they perform the task themselves? or are they trying to influence humans that, to do it? Well, not this. You're asking the really good questions mm, because that's what they've got to do. They've got, that's like, what we do on the show when we talk to interesting people. We try to think of interesting questions. Oh, that's a great one. Mm-hmm. Not because that's Interesting true. people talking to interest, interested people talking, talking to, to interesting this is, people. This is good. Interesting you guys are interested to. and I'm interesting. Yes, But correct. listen to this. I'm also interested. Isn't that something? Whoa. Wow. Right. And are but we I, interesting, this, do you no, think? No. <laughs> oh, okay. No, that's what's interesting. Yeah, that's, I think <laughs> that why, you're not. I, I think that's why people probably fast forward the first section. Probably, right. So, yeah. so answer the question. I will. So a ghost... Can certainly pick up a ghost hammer. What That's is a ghost no hammer? problem. A ghost hammer is like it's a it's a ghostly hammer. You know, if a ghost wanted to fix a ghost house or something like that, or if he wanted to hit another ghost, let's say, God forbid. So wait, wait, a ghost house. Do ghosts have houses of their own that are ethereal constructions? Right, they do. Oh, okay. they oh, do. So and we so can't see them. If a ghost right. is, let me just very quickly. If yeah. if I was to be living in Scotland and in my house, which you can't do. But, I mean, you're welcome to visit. But you got to get, get on the fucking bus. You got to get on the fucking bus. For the sake go. of argument, but, let's say yeah. I'm Scottish. All right, and I live in Scotland in Edinburgh 
in my own home, my home is haunted Your by a home. ghost. Yeah. Now, that ghost, when it, the workday is done hunting, my house goes to his own house. It, a ghost house? And is that uh, basically on the same edifice as the real house? Can you, if right. you were able to see ghostly forms, would you see the outline of a ghost house on top of a real house? The answer is sometimes and sometimes. Oh, okay. Interesting. So, sometimes, it's not one to one. It's not one. Sometimes you got a ghost who haunts your house for a job. I mean, that's his job. Oh, basically, he punches and he punches out. Right? Usually, Wait, they have ghost clocks. They, ghost of course, time, they do. They clocks? do. Yeah, they've got is ghost there, time like, clocks. How is he being paid? Well, is it an hourly wage? Bucks? This is very. And I hear probably this, Bitcoin. <laughs> it's controversial because they're not and probably Boo Coin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're paid in ghost money, which I can't spend on things in the real world. It's like Disney right? dollars. It's a yeah. bit. Is it's it, like funny I, money at the strip club. I don't know what that funny is. Money. Funny money at the strip club. Yeah. What yeah. is funny money at the strip club? It's like um, uh, at, like a strip club. They'll give you you. They'll give you fake dollars. Yeah, or something fake and money. You pay for them? Yes, yes. I don't like it when things are funny at the strip club. I'm not there yeah. to fucking laugh. <laughs> But anyway, well, you got really wow. dark there. For a Don't second. go to the fucking. Sometimes they say, as a comedian up at the strip club, they'll try that. Sometimes yeah. I'm not here. Your brow is just laugh. furrowed, and you are. Is it bleeding? Sometimes <laughs> my brow. I get. You know what I mean? So angry. I'll furrow it so much that yeah. it bleeds. Yeah, that pimple yeah. right in the middle yeah, just yeah, like yeah. pops. Sorry, guys. I don't want That's to okay. do that. That's it's, okay. I know it doesn't. Why look do you have right? a pimple right in the really in between your eyebrows? Just touched on something right there. I've been to the dermatologist. He says it's a perma pimple. Do you know those? Ah, purple. It's a perma pimple. It's not going anywhere. It's been there 18 years already. Do you just cow. take a look and go, that baby's not going he anywhere. He says, it's not going anywhere. He says, we could take out the whole forehead and graft on. Oh, uh, but a new like, forehead. Wow. Forget it. It's not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yep. So some ghosts <laughs> will haunt your house for a little while and then go back to their own house. But a lot of the time, you've got a ghost whose house is in your house. And the bed uh, is like right there like on your 20% bed. Or it's like 20% of it is in your yeah. house or something like that. Yeah. Um, a lot of crossover. Right. So it, it happens But that doesn't ways, count in times. the square footage of your house. You can't count the square footage of the ghost house as or well. Vice well, it certainly does amongst sort of like the ghost assayer. The ghost community. Sure, the ghost yes. assayer yes. will look yeah. at it. Is it. Yeah. So in your business, right. you are promoting people coming in and going to places where these ghosts live. Are you work? going to the ghost houses or what are you going I do to the- is, I mean, it's obviously true that there's ghosts everywhere. And okay. for the first, like... For a while, when I did the tour, I said to people, like, you don't need to go to specific places because there's ghosts everywhere, everywhere around us. And, and a lot of people say, well, I feel ripped off, you know. So you, do- you would take their money. Right. And then admonish and then them that they don't need to go anywhere. Well, it wasn't like it money, but I take their money. Of course, you take the, the first thing you do at the yeah. ghost tour. We all meet right at sunset at the wee statue. Sunset. The, right okay. at sunset okay. at the wee statue of the Grey Friars Bobby there. Okay. You know the story of the Grey Friars Bobby. I, do, wee, I, know. I don't. Oh, it's a sunset take... wee bit, dog, the Grey Friars Bobby. Let's they, hear it. They made a movie about him, Walt Disney did. But none of that is fucking true at all. It's which which movie did they nice. do? What was Grey that, Friars Ralph? Bobby. No, it wasn't Wreck It Ralph. It was a film called Grey Friars Bobby, all what about. What was Wreck It Ralph we, about? Wreck It Ralph <laughs> was about a video game guy <laughs> who's going around from game to game, right? Oh, cool. And he's oh. trying to. He's falling in love or he's getting the back at a bad guy, going from game to game and wrecks things or something. Huh. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, well, I always wondered about that's that. That's cool. Thank you. But that's not like a, an area of my expertise. You, sure. Have you ever played video I've games? I've never played video games. Not a single one. I haven't got time. No, I that's, haven't got time. That's fine. That's understandable. You seem like someone who might be made. How old are you? I'm, well, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm 38. Oh, okay. That's fine. 38. So you're of that generation, but maybe it just didn't connect with you. Yeah, no, we didn't Video have games. a lot of money. And oh. I had a question that I hope you don't mind me kind of sidetracking us sure. a little bit. No, what, so what's the movie Zootopia about? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, again, I do want to tell I've you, seen the this cover. This is not my area of expertise. <laughs> but you like, do know. Films and well, I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with it. I mean, I've seen the <laughs> posters and, and I did see, I think, like... Um, You've never seen the film? I've not You've just seen, seen the film. Neither of us seen Wreck-It seen, Ralph. I haven't I've, seen them. I've seen posters as well. Okay, and yes. I can only suppose what I've seen it on my Apple TV and I wonder like, oh, should I get this or not? But I wish... I, I don't what it think was the about. poster does a good job communicating what the actual movie is. Uh-huh. Well, so what do, you, what do you think Zootopia is about? It's about animals, right? And, Certainly. And they live like um, in a city that's yep. like a zoo, right? <laughs> yeah. Sure, but what's it about? And, and well, one of it that's is a world. rabbit. That's world building. Right. Yep. What's the actual plot? <laughs> I think it's just about like, can these animals like get along? <laughs> 
<laughs> and, and adventures. And so uh, all the set pieces are just uh, putting animals together and seeing if they eat each other. Well, <laughs> look, I think one of them is going from video game to video game, <laughs> yeah, trying to fall in love and trying to get like a bad guy. Maybe, maybe. <clears throat> right. All right. So you, you didn't have a lot so of money. So you would take people's money and you would say, here are the ghosts. The oh, first gray, thing gray we do with me at the statue of the Grey Friars, Bobby, wee okay. Bobby. I don't I, think that's a Disney movie. Well, it is a Disney movie. Oh, yeah. Everybody in Scotland was, knows this movie. Is that like the Apple Dumpling Game? It's, uh, is that uh, what I'm Sort of, of around that era. What was that about? The Apple Dumpling Game <laughs> was Tim Conway and Harvey Corman. Well, yeah, they're, they're on the poster. We all know that. <laughs> they're going from video game to video <laughs> okay, game looking for Apple Dumplings. <laughs> uh, oh, so, Grey Friars Bobby, there was an officer of the law who was uh, like... Uh, he had a, a wee bit dog, right? A, a, a wee little dog. Does that mean a small, Bobby. a small dog? Uh, that's right. Okay. Um, and he died. The officer died. And oh. they buried him in the kirkyard. Greyfriars kirkyard. Okay. And the wee doggy w- stayed by his side the whole time. The Stay, wee, by the grave? By the graveside. He would not leave the, size, the side of his master. He laid on the grave every night. And one night, he dug, he dug him up. And he scratched his way through the lid of the coffin oh. and he fucking ate this cop. He just, he ate him up and like, he took his bones. Like and Mary Provost. Running around with his bones. What? Like Mary Provost. I don't know that. Oh, there's, uh, it's a song by Nick Lowe about a movie star who dies and the dog eats her. Is that right? Yeah. But this is the And they travel game. around from video game to video game. <laughs> In that song? Looking for other movie stars to eat. That's a good song. And they finally get to George Clooney. Right. Oh, well, that's like, what it ends up. That's what it ends up, right? That's dessert. So so the dog eats, eats. And ran around with the bones and then it got to be a habit and he started doing it all over the kirkyard, digging up bodies and eating their bones and running all around until somebody shot him in the street and the whole town cheered and they put him on a pike at the castle. That's Whoa. the true story. How is that a ghost story? Well, because to this day. Oh, oh. People, Ooh, this voice. Did you guys oh, see oh, his voice right. change? Yeah, he sort of lowered it. Ooh, Ooh, I'm yes. in. Oh, I'm, I just got chills. This yeah. is what we do on the tour to this day. Do you train your employees to do this? To say, you say lower your voice. I am the one point. that does the tour and I do all the talking. If I've got other helpers, they're doing other other parts of it. But they're I just do like this part. Shushing people off to the bus station. And Stuff like that. Or right. wait. Do you have people like doing like characters or like? There's a uh, bit of that, right? There's a yeah. bit of that. I don't want to give away all the secrets of the of tour, not. but I'll tell you something. We do, do. But anyway, uh, to this day, oh my God. people. Ooh. Ooh. Every time he says it, Ooh, I was just right. like, sends chills. a shiver down yeah. your oh spine. And imagine now I'm saying it in a kirkyard. Oh, God. Right? Ooh, Can you imagine? Is... Gravestones all around us. Ooh, this is right. grisly. That's right. To this day. I'm scared. Yeah, you ought to be scared. Hmm. The people say that they hear. The howling and the barking of the dog and the crunching of the bones as they walk around Grey Friars Kirkyard at night. Wow. Oh, wait. my gosh. It's scary, isn't Ugh. it? That's and, a scary story. And then, and then do you have someone who, like, a little bit far away does, a, like, a little howl That's or something? That's exactly what I do. I've got a guy who then he's like, you know, he's hiding behind a crypt and he starts going, Hoo! And then people, like the panting. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's, there's nothing that's scarier than the panting a of a yeah. dog. Well, what's he panting for? That's right? true, because he's out of breath Aye. and he can't chase you any longer. That's right. And they don't that's sweat. Not that scary. Dogs it's, don't have sweat uh, glands. So they that's, have to pant. That's how they perspire, yes. is the pant. A and lot of times we think a dog is smiling at, at us. No. They're just hot. They're not smiling. No, they're, they're desperate. Hot. They're, they're so hot. And what's scarier than that, really? A hot dog. Saying, you know and what I'm what's up, hot dog? Glands. It's terrible. <laughs> you know what Do you know our friend Hot Dog? Hot Dog? No, I don't know him. <laughs> Why would he? <laughs> It's a guy by the name of Hot Dog. He's, his name's uh, Hot Dog. He skis around. That's his Water name. Skis. Water skis. I don't know anybody by that name. Yeah. <laughs> What's, I, would, I will say this because the, this story, though legitimately terrifying. Ah, yeah. It's terrifying. D- touches for me upon something we were talking about earlier in the show, which is uh, dogs. I mean, the, the story is about the loyalty of this dog and the yeah, dog right. loves its master. That's and right. Blah, blah, blah. But like the, the, there is no malice at the end of the story because the dog is so sweet and full of love. I feel like a scarier story would be about a cat. 
Yeah, and you an know, like, alien who tries to eat the cat. Yeah, and we're just alien, pi- we're pitching Alf again. We're trying to we're trying Shit. to repitch Alf. God damn it! <laughs> well, Look, I'm always looking for new scary stories. So if you've got watch, one, watch all episodes of Alf, especially the guy who plays the dad. Yeah, <laughs> that's, and read a little bit about him on Wikipedia. Oh, right, <laughs> really? Right. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. we we need to that's take ringing a bit of a bell. <laughs> yeah, we need to take a break. Cameron, can you stick around? We want to get a little more into your business when oh, we come we back. Is that get okay? Into your business. Get into my business. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Sure, your That's personal fine. life. All oh, right, yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. That's no problem. When we come back, Cameron McGonagall will still be with us. Jason Manzukas will be right back with more comedy. Bang bang after this. A day life. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of businesses out there. Let's face it. They're like, buy the book, buy the numbers. You give us this money. We give you this thing. It's boring. It's just boring, isn't it? I want my business that I choose to give my money to. I want it to have, well, let's face it, a rebellious spirit, right? But what business out there has one of those? Well, I found one. That's right. Listeners of this show will be very excited that I've, I talk about this every week. I want a business with a rebellious spirit. Well, I finally found one because Warby Parker was founded with a rebellious spirit. And not only that, but they were founded with a lofty goal. Now, when they started Warby Parker, they were like, well, what do we want to do? Do we want to uh, make bricks? No, no, no. Someone came in and they said, look, we have a great name, Warby Parker. But what if we created boutique quality eyewear at a revolutionary price point. <gasps> and then it clicked with everyone. And they said, yes, get these bricks out of here that we've been making for the past two years. We want to do this. A new concept in eyewear, Warby Parker. It's amazing. I'm wearing Warby Parkers right now, as a matter of fact. Glasses start at $95, and that's including prescription lenses. Let me take you through what happens with Warby Parker. All right. So you get sent a bunch of pairs of glasses. Now, you don't, you have no idea what glasses look good on your face. Trust me. I didn't know. I, I saw one. I was like, oh, I love these. I put them on. Everyone's like, nah, 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 nah. Get them off your dang face. The ones I thought were like, eh, maybe those looked perfect on me. I do look perfect. Um, These glasses are amazing. You pick the one that you like and that all of your friends say, yeah, that's the one. You get your prescription filled with those, and that's the one you keep. All right? Sunglasses, they also start at $95, including premium polarized lenses, which are scratch-resistant and provide 100% UV protection. They're also available with prescriptions starting at $175 and available through that home try-on program. Warby Parker, what they believe— is that glasses should be viewed as a fashion accessory. Accessory. And that's the way they pronounce it. They're weird. Accessory. I don't know. I've told them it's accessory, but they don't listen to me. But it should be a fashion accessory, just like a bag, a shoe, a necktie, a hat. Warby Parker makes it easy and affordable to accessorize with glasses. And get this, for every pair of glasses that they sell, Warby Parker is going to distribute a pair of glasses to someone in need. Now, maybe that should be you. Like, If I were you, I would say, let someone else buy the glasses. I need glasses. Hey, Warby Parker, send one to me. I don't think that's the way it works, though. (laughs) I think you have to buy them. But isn't that the way of the world? Um, It's amazing. Warby Parker makes buying glasses online easy and risk-free. Uh, You order five pairs, they ship them directly to your door, you can try them on in the comfort of your own home and get feedback from friends, family, colleagues, the mailman, whoever has an opinion about your face. You can try the frames on for five days before you send them back using a free prepaid return shipping label with no obligation to purchase any of them, honestly. It's 100% free, and it is so easy that a dog or a cat could do this. If they spoke English... We're able to not chase the mailman away and had opposable thumbs. It's that easy. It is really that easy. Uh, I have two pairs of Warby Parkers, as a matter of fact. I got one, and I was so impressed, I went and got another one. Uh, head to warbyparker.com slash bang bang. You can see my current favorite frames and get started with your free home try-on today. Choose the five frames you want to try on, mail the frames back, 
choose your favorite pair or pairs to have your prescription added to, and then just order. Warby Parker makes your experience completely risk-free and free shipping all around. Visit warbyparker.com slash bangbang to begin your free home try-on experience today. And after you head to warbyparker.com slash bangbang and place your home try-on order, make sure to download the Warby Parker app From the iTunes App Store, they built this awesome home try-on companion feature, which allows you to quickly take photos wearing all the frames, stitch it into a video, share it with friends and family, and they will help you pick a a, a Werner, (laughs) a Werner Herzog. All right. WarbyParker.com slash bang bang. (laughs) We spend every minute of every day doing charity work and giving back to our communities. That's, uh, That's what we like to do, right? But what if... In those precious few hours that you're asleep and unable physically to perform your charity work, what if you could still give back during those hours? Intriguing notion, is it not? But I guess it's not possible. I don't even know why I started the, wait a minute, this just in. Lisa allows you to give back while you sleep. Oh my gosh. Wow. What is Lisa, you ask? I'm glad you asked, because Lisa is an innovative direct-to-consumer online mattress brand that is also socially conscious. They are driven by the mission to provide a better place to sleep for everybody. What a slogan. What a, Oh, my God, Lisa. You've done it. Amazing. A better place to sleep for everybody. And for every 10 mattresses Lisa sells, they donate one to a shelter through their 110 program. That's, that's the thing. You know, you can be sleeping on your mattress and sleep on it for 10 days. You've already given a mattress away to someone for one night. Is that how it works? I have no idea. (laughs) But um, Lisa is also planting a tree. They're in the tree business. Mattresses aren't even made of trees, and they're out there planting trees. Lisa, you crazy for this one. Uh, They donate or they plant a tree for every mattress sold, and they donate 1% of each employee's time to volunteer for local causes. Lisa, you're doing it. But best of all, Lisa's patented universal adaptive feel is designed for all types of sleepers, light, heavy, in between, and features three, count them, three premium foam layers, including two-inch Avena foam top layer and cooling for breathability, two-inch memory foam middle layer for body contouring and pressure relief, and six-inch dense core support foam for durability and structure for sleepers of all sizes. By the way, Lisa, available online in the U.S., UK, the Canada, and Germany, or at the Lisa Dream Gallery in NYC, this 100% American-made mattress ships compressed in a box to your door so you can save a trip to the store. It is no wonder it is a Forbes Top 20 startup to watch. You know what? I have a Lisa. I say goodnight, and I wake up in the morning. And that's what a good mattress should do. And that's my personal testimonial. Try a Lisa mattress in your own home for 100 nights, risk-free, with free shipping always, and get $100 off when you go to leesa.com. That's lisa.com slash bang bang. That's leesa.com slash bang bang. <laughs> Comedy bang bang. We're back here. Jason Manzoukas, of course, in the co-pilot seat, Hey-o. in the corn dog, horn dog seat. And uh, we also have... Th- Ca- thrilled to be here. I'm, it, th- having, I'm having a, a lot of time. fun. Having a great time. We also have Cameron McGonagall well, that's of right. Scotland from, is here well, with us. From Edinburgh, specifically. Specifically I don't want anyone to get the idea I'm from the Heelands. I'm not one of them. Sorry, sorry. Uh, and uh, he's telling us about his... What is the name of your business, by the way? It's called Cameron McGonagall's Ghost Tours That Are Scary. Ghost Tours That Are Scary. That's right. That says it all. It says who owns it. That's it right. says what it is. My name's and it right says there in it. The effect that it will have upon because you. Because a lot of ghost tours, they don't scare you very much. Yeah, right. This one is real scary. Well, it You've, answers the question that I suspect everybody immediately has upon being pitched Do you want to go on a ghost tour? Is it scary? It's scary. Is it scary? And so, then they can decide one way or the other. Yes. Oh, I don't want to be scared today. That's right. I feel like a lot of people, the popularity of horror movies right now tells us people are enjoying being scared. People love oh, it. Did you see Get to Out? Be scared. Um, so you've talked about the one thing that happens is you have a person imitating a dog briefly. That's right. Uh, right there in, uh, by the, by the, is it a statue or is it a, uh, he's hiding behind the crypt. He's, and, right. uh, yeah. We're in the courtyard. You're in the courtyard. Yeah. Is, that's right. Is there a statue of a dog there though? There is a statue of Greyfriars Bobby, but it's outside the gates of the courtyard. So we meet there and then we walk just across the street into the courtyard and we tour around and we talk about some of the people that's now, buried there. In that and walk. That's right. In, in that, that walk. Walk from the statue to the courtyard, you must encounter many other ghosts. Can well, you see ghosts? 
I, no, I can't you see can't. them, but oh. I know they're there. You do. It's thousands of them, thousands and thousands of ghosts all around us, you just on that short walk. No, it's just logic tells you they're oh, there. Oh, I see. But so I'm talking about, like, I'm telling the people on the walk, we're surrounded by thousands and thousands of ghosts right now, and you can just see. And these ghosts, if it's a sunny day, are, like, doing a lot of, like, upkeep and work and, like, right. cleaning up. Yeah, those are con- the scariest they're times. They're very, very busy. Well, job. not just that. They're doing a little bit of upkeep on their ghost houses. But yeah. as we were saying before. <laughs> they're trying they're, to convince they're humans. They're trying to convince right. humans. Whisper in your ear. Leave a clue here and there. Yep. You know. And some ghosts have the power mm-hmm. to push Humans. Oh wow! To, to like give like, them a just physical give them a push. push. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's so right. like they'll push them towards a human hammer. Right. They'll push them towards a human hammer, and then they'll push them toward the broken so shot is it, or, or the fat roof or is whatnot. Is it like? Uh, would you say that the entirety of the construction industry in Scotland is being? Uh, uh, controlled by ghosts, the silent hand of ghosts. I would say it's roughly about 90% <laughs> is the silent hand of ghosts wow. because, and part of it is, who better than a ghost to tell you what needs fixing in your house? That's a good point. They can walk into your walls. Yeah. They can easily levitate up and have a look at the roof. They can yeah. take a look at any wiring problems. Any wiring. They, they know all about the wires and all you about kind the plumbing. You want, you would, I suspect, here's the business for you. All right. Cameron. Yeah. I don't know if you're interested in a side job. Here's I a side always, job because always. you already have some sort of communication. Or I guess maybe you don't, but some sort of connection with ghosts. With ghosts. I have like an if understanding you could have them. like a you ghost. Can what? You can understand I have an understanding of who they are and what they do. Well, then if and you I know that when I talk, they can hear me. You should start yeah. a construction company. You should become a contractor where you have a ghost person who goes around and tells you everything that's wrong that's in real houses. Idea. Then you go to them and, and you give, say... gives you a little push towards right. whatever the then issues are. Then you say, are. here's what's wrong with your house. My ghost foreman told me so. Right. You know, That's a great idea. And then you, you're just making crazy money in construction. Because I'm always looking for other jobs like um, not during the tourist season when it's not high July. season for tourism. Sure. Right. <laughs> July. And I, so that's a great idea and I'd call it uh, Cameron McGonagall's repair Ghost repairs that will scare you. That will scare you. Yeah. <laughs> Ghost repairs because are scary. part of your thing can be like uh, telling a scary story we're, about we're what's wrong with the house. Done. We're right. gonna get oh, the job we'll done. We're gonna get the job but. done. But it's very scary. <laughs> yeah, because it's a ghost that told me you need this done. And also, what's very scary about it is that you have a leak in your roof. And yes. you could lower your voice exactly yeah. like that. To this very day, <laughs> yes, your roof is leaking into your upstairs bathroom. And it creating a mold. Black problem. mold. That's right, yes. a black mold in between the ceiling beams. Yes. Right. See, it's terrifying. This terrifying. is a huge business opportunity. But, I mean, it's a bit difficult because the ghosts, as far as I know, can only really communicate with you by pushing you around. So I'd, <laughs> right. be, just, I'd be just getting pushed around yeah. all the time and trying to interpret. So you couldn't. There you, are no ghost notes. Yeah, they, their to-do the lists are of. only for them. That you could right. you couldn't find and read a ghost. Every right. once in a while in a movie, you'll hear like a ghost whispering or going. <laughs> yeah, or, or, or like on an audio tape, like the yeah. audio tape Does, in a movie that, will catch the ghost. Is that true to ghost. life? Or? Well, sometimes a breeze, a particular sort of a breeze, might be a ghostly breeze. Like, but then oh. now you're in the business of trying to interpret. That's what, just a, what weatherman. a breeze might mean. Yeah, that's you're just pitching us weathermen. Right. Well, <laughs> is that, is that do what you think that's what does? weathermen are trying to do? Is talk to weather, talk to the ghosts that control the weather? Could. Me, I don't know. That's yeah, that's job. right, meteorologists. Well, Cameron, that's I, what we've reduced you to. <laughs> Cameron, I want I want to get to your tour. What else right. happens on these tours? Because you start there at, right. the, at the statue of the Bobby. That's right. And then, are there other scary things that happen? Oh, what? so many scary things. Well, look, it depends on if the what kind of a moon we've got. If we've got a full <laughs> moon and it's bright outside, we will. Well, we'll there, it's a little bit different because people can see well. But on a night when people can't see anything, then the guy that does the dog, he'll come out of the crypt and he'll get down on his hands and knees and he'll bite a few people on the ankles. He'll, oh wow, that's right. Is right. he dressed as a dog? He's just covered all in black. I've got oh. him covered it just head so to like toe in black. Theater, like he's a theater stage. That's fan. right. You can't see him at all, and he sneaks up. And he bites, and I mean, he really bites. Yeah, you know, this is a, really? a, a friend of mine named Stuart, and he just comes up and he just gets right in your ankles, and he's got sharp teeth. He sharpens his teeth. Really? That's right. Wow. Yeah, it's well, With what? With like a nail file, he sharpens his uh-huh, teeth. Okay. To, to, the bit, to be more like a dog, because you know, a dog's teeth are sharper quite, than ours. Quite sharp. Quite Th- sharp. Great fact. That's right. So he'll come up and he'll he'll bite a few people on the ankles. You, is is that the case in Milo and Otis? Milo and Otis, the, the, the Disney movie. <laughs> 
Their teeth are sharper than people's. Yeah, is that how you got that fact? Uh, I, <laughs> I haven't seen that. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I from the poster, it. I can the kind only, of tell. The only film that I've seen... The only... You've only seen one film? ...has been Greyfriars Bobby. Oh, oh right. okay. Because mm -hmm. it's connected, obviously. Right. You've not seen any other Scottish set movies. What happened was... They had a screening of that film, mm -hmm. and I saw it, and everybody there was so mad because it's total bullshit. Not a fucking thing that happens in that movie what really happened, what happened. happened in the movie? Oh, in that movie, it's like, it's a guy, he's a shepherd, he's got a dog, and he comes into town, and he dies, and the dog won't, won't leave his side, and uh, he, he doesn't dig up anything, and everybody's impressed with him, and everybody loves him, and he becomes a hero of the town. What, a shepherd? This is the plot of this movie? A That's shepherd right. comes to town who has a dog? Right. And everyone's impressed with it? Him? I don't like it. Right, it's bullshit. That's, that's got third act problems and first and second act problems. <laughs> yeah, I, it's not a good film, and it's not what happened with the real Greyfriars Bobby. We should pitch a reboot. Pitch a reboot of Greyfriars Bobby. That's the real story. Right, and maybe great. Stewart could be in it. Stewart would love to be he, in. He's it. filed his teeth down. Wow, I can't believe he filed. So, how does the rest of his life work? <laughs> the rest of his life? Yeah, and when he's not being. Yeah, how the, many hours does he work yeah. a, a week or a day? I do. The tour is like it's a seven-hour tour Ooh, Whoa. from sundown to sunup. That's right. seven hours. It's a seven-hour tour. Spooky. Yeah, because we cover a lot of ground. Mm. Is there a, a, like a a meal break? Is there? No, this I is guess no it's meal the middle break. of the night, so people aren't traditionally eating, although they're yeah. sleeping usually then, well, you, which is why they're not eating. That, right. Well, we do. We stop in at a few different places, a few different pubs and, and whatnot, uh -huh. you know, and, and so you can get a drink. and uh, but Maybe no a, time well, to get a, a meal. Scottish egg or Scotch egg? Is I that? suppose, but it's no time, really. We're, we're in a hurry. How really? much time do you spend in the pubs? In the, the pub, we stop it. We stop into a bunch of... And I'll tell you, quite honestly, the way it works is that friends of mine who own pubs say, well, you bring your tourists around oh, and, right. have, and make you them buy a, a drink. Get a little kickback. Kickback. I get a little bit of a kickback. And we make them buy drinks, you know. You Really? We make them buy drinks. Do you, uh, how do you do... How how do you make people buy drinks? Well, I tell them you don't want to get bitten again, do you? <laughs> or shoved? Are people just bandaging their ankles at this point? <laughs> Wait, so you have yeah. other people that shove? I've got a few guys. Mm -hmm. Shovers. Yeah. How many people are you employing? Am I employing? Well, it's a, to do each it's tour. It's different every yeah. night. Sometimes okay. it's like five or six guys oh, wow. who so come along during the course of the night. Stu to bite. Does he have any other duties? Stu is biting. And then there at Greyfriars Kirkyard, he's also Bloody George McKenzie is buried there. Oh, oh wow. Bloody wow. George McKenzie. Well, I don't know his story. Well, Bloody George McKenzie was a barrister and he was responsible for the death of like thousands and thousands of Presbyterians. And so they buried him there, and it is said that if you go and you visit his crypts, you might get shoved real hard into a wall. Whoa! No, yeah, that's right. That's and so by, his, so by now, his ghost, by the ghost of Bloody George and McKenzie. And so now, do you have a friend who is? Stuart who, does that too. Stuart does Stuart's the, the guy for the Grey Friars Kirkyard. He does the bites and <laughs> right. he does the shoves. Does he live nearby? He, he doesn't go travel. He along lives with you? there. He lives right he there. He lives right really? there. He yeah. lives. To be right. honest with you, he lives in in the crypt in the Wait, Bloody George. Like is this is a homeless guy? Are these all homeless people that you employ? <laughs> well, I don't really ask him too many questions, but I don't know that none of them has ever invited me to their house. Let's say that, yeah. right? <laughs> This is sort of a... That's the, uh, just <laughs> trademark of a homeless person. No house invitations. When you, when you <laughs> could found, be, it could be. When you found all these people that you employ in the different locations right. at, at which they scare people, uh -huh. did you find them living in those locations? Usually, yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, you, those are homeless You go people. there in the daytime and they're there and they're asleep and you say, hey, later on at night, will you be here at night? <laughs> that's the other thing about homeless people, always sleeping during the day. Oh, isn't that terrible? Why, that's why they can't hold down jobs. Well, that's why. I think, yeah, that's right. Did you get a job? You I got think to they wake all have, up? Yeah, probably have chronic fatigue syndrome or something. <laughs> right. Well, they're just insomniacs. So I give them a hand up and I say, you come join me after sunset. Join me in my army of homeless people. <laughs> <laughs> and I give them a totally black outfit. That's for me. I provide that, you know. Wow, yeah. Head to toe black. Okay. You know, and Head to toe. Head to toe, yeah. That's like a right. stocking over there? Uh, that's right, right. That's right. Totally black. Hmm. And uh, I, I provide that and I tell them, you know, 
know, it's a simple job. You got to do is bite some people and shove some people into a wall. Is it the same outfit? Like, does Stu have to take it off when you leave and you give it to the next person? He passes the- it on to me, and <laughs> so then I carry it with us to our really next the stop provi- on the tour. Providing the outfits is not <laughs> so that have, big of a you thing. Have one, <laughs> I've got you have one. one outfit. I'm an independent businessman. I told you I'm not <laughs> part of some bragging big- about that. Providing the outfits, and you only have one. I provide these guys with something to wear for about forty minutes every night. <laughs> I don't. And know. so they and have it's to nice wear. It's nice and warm too. <laughs> it's it's, it's a real take, warm outfit. Then you take it off. How, how many of these people have pneumonia because they're yeah. taking off your warm outfits and then during the time that they wear it, they are hot. I'll tell you that right now because it's all wool. It's wool top oh, to God. bottom. Oh. It's <laughs> totally wool. Wool mask. It's a wool face mask. Oh. And uh, a couple of one of them is allergic to wool. As a matter no of fact. wonder Stu is panting so hard. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got sweat glands. Anyway, yes, yes. that's right. So and, and then I take the black outfit and I take it on with me to the next stop, which is Brody's Close. We go to Brody's Close. I don't know Brody's Close. You don't know Brody's Close. William Brody. William Brody. Ooh. He was an upstanding member of the community. Except oh, okay, that sounds great. Oh, I can't see this oh, going so bad. You think? But he Wait, had did a, you say except? Except he had a secret. What? He had a job making, fixing locks and making keys for locks. That's not much of a secret. I mean, oh. I would probably feel so comfortable he, telling you. He was a locksmith. That. That's right, but that's not the secret oh. part, lads. Oh. What he did with these locks is he made reproductions of locks and keys that keys that he had no business having the locks to. Oh. Some of them were banks and he'd sneak in and he'd steal the money. Ooh. And some of them were private houses and he'd break in and murder people. What? He murdered people. People all over town. No. That's right. Wow. wow. And they figured it out and they hanged him. Ah. And and so he is. I feel like he would be like. The obvious suspect suspects. number one. Yeah, like, but this is why, and I've always said it. This is why you, every single person in the United States, should become a locksmith on their own. Why is Interesting. that? Be Interesting. your own locksmith, and Be then your you're own ne- locksmith, and you're never going to get murdered. Oh, that's a good idea, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, wait a minute, <laughs> because nobody else knows how to get into your, your lock. Exactly. You're so, the only one who you're, ever... You're who creating your own keys. It would have worked. It would save me a lot of time, too, because go, I'm going all the time to have keys cut. Always at the locksmith. Always at the locksmith getting keys cut. Cut my keys, Daddy. Yeah. So oh, what he does to this day... I made a boom boom in my lock. Dive life. Ooh. To this day... Oh, God. Yes. The ghost of William Brody Ooh. is seen walking around <gasps> Brody's close what? on a flaming horse. What? Wait, wait, wait. That wait, wasn't wait, part wait, of it. Yeah. Uh, what, what? I know. That wasn't part of what he did in life. But that's part of the legend. He right. goes around on a flaming horse. Did Why? you start this that, part? No, nah, that's just part of the story. Because oh, fl- flames have nothing to do with locks or any. It's a weird, I'll admit that. But that's part of the story. And you can hear him jingling his keys Ooh. from atop the flaming horse. Yeah. So do you have a guy jingling keys or do you have a flaming horse? We've got both. What? what? That's right. How do you get the fl- I, how do you, listen, I, I understand Cameron, the, the yeah. jingling keys. Cameron, how, yeah. how, are you lighting horses on fire? <laughs> well. I mean, it's part of the story, right? <laughs> so what we do is we go down to Brody's clothes and we get a horse and we get like the oldest after horse we you, can. After you bring the clothes to your... First, yes. I bring the black outfit <laughs> to the guy who plays Brody and that's yeah. a friend of mine named Doggy. And I say, Doggy, put on the black suit. You have to tell him to do this each time. <laughs> Every fucking night. Well, he's I, got I, a I, head problem. Yeah, I suspect okay. a lot of people probably don't even remember what's going on. That's funny you should say that because <laughs> a few of these guys, every night I've got to explain it to them all over again. <laughs> this is a ghost tour and it's meant to be scary. <laughs> and you're going to put on this outfit. You're going to jingle some keys. And jingle some keys and get top this horse and, and then... Wait, the guy's on the horse when you light it on oh, fire? No. Oh. Of course he is he's riding the horse Cameron I is there any possibility that every night you lose a Dougie <laughs> well that's interesting I never thought of that are you just calling this person yeah, Dougie are you just calling are, is each in each location right. are you just calling whatever homeless person you come upon Stuart or Dougie and maybe that's no wonder to, they don't know what the clothes are for I never thought of that but it would explain it. that they're never familiar with what, is, <laughs> what they did last night I mean it would explain it <laughs> But I don't know if that's here or not. But anyway. Okay, cool. Yep. So you get him on the horse. I put him on the horse. And then I've got another guy named Laird. 
who lights the horse on fire. <laughs> and I got to explain this to him every yeah. fucking night. And he's like, you know, you just we're going to put on. And it, what we do is we put on a very flammable coat on the horse. And it's, it depends on how long we talk about this, but there's a decent chance that the horse will, will you know, run away. Sure, because it's on fire. <laughs> right. And, and it'll be, if it's raining outside or something, the rain will put out the fire. Sure. We don't, it's not, guys, it's not like we burn alive a new horse every night. It's not. Not always. No. It depends if it's how raining. How many ghost horses would you say there are? What do you mean? In this, in this particular part of your tour. Because <laughs> oh. horses become ghosts as well, I Horses would definitely become ghosts, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, lots and lots of you've, horse You've been ghosts. doing this how long now? I'm, You're a 38-year-old man. I've been doing the tour now for 12 years. 12 years, oh, so, right. and, you, and you take a month off. I take a month off. Well, right. no, do you, do you take a month off? Or during that tourism month, is that your busy season? I do the tour all year long, except I take... A month off in, I don't know if you have them here, but we call it uh, January and February. I take yeah, that yeah, month off. Yeah, we have both. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 actually, I take, you, this has come up a couple of times. I think we share the same calendar. <laughs> the Roman one. Yeah. Is it the Roman? You've got the Roman one. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we do, do the, the Roman, Roman one. one. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, that's yeah. great. That'll make things that's so, much so much easier. That's going to so much time. Oh, yeah. so much you easier. don't have to explain any of that. It's talking about days. You've got the seven days of the week, right? Oh, yeah. you got those as well. Absolutely. That's great. Yeah, we don't Ringo Star it up. What he's got eight days. He's a got week. eight. He's yeah, got eight. Right, yeah, he right. had a weird calendar. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He was a little wrong in the head. That well, guy. peace and love is his whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and not signing autographs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know all about that. If you send him anything, you it will be autographs? tossed. I or you tried to get him to. I am still trying to get Ringo Starr because he's I, not going to do it. Oh, and man, I, this is what <laughs> happened. I sent him a letter with a photo of himself for him to sign. Oh, that's good. Literally, not a photo of yourself. Literally, like. I put it in the mail and the morning of the day that that video came oh, out. Oh, no. And I thought, like, that's not fair, right? It, yeah, yeah, just give the it, deadline. Anything right post-dated should be valid. It ought to be, right? Yeah. right. But, you know, he's Ringo Starr. Well. So how many ghost horses? I mean, you've been doing this 12 years. 12 years, years I've been with, doing it. With oh, just right. one one or two months off. I mean, that's right. a lot of horses. Uh, what about, as I say, we don't, it's not like we burn alive a horse every night. If it's raining, like, hard enough to put out the fire, sure. that horse so is fine. So you're not... So what you're saying, though, is not every night does a horse die because it's being burned. Right. Sometimes they are just burned. scarred. Burned, hurt. I don't even know that. But they live. We've got a flammable horse jacket that we put on the horse. Oh, so it's like a special effect? That's right. And if you don't put it out in like a couple of minutes, probably the horse will get burned. Usually, I think those things take about 20 seconds okay. or so. I don't you've know. Got the I don't flammable know. horse jacket on the horse. Right. You've got Dougie. Dougie. On the jacket. Dougie's on the jacket. And That's Laird. Right. And Laird is sitting, is setting on fire the, the okay. horse. So now, if, underneath the jacket, perhaps, let's say for the sake of argument, the horse is moderately safe if it's raining. Right. But wouldn't Dougie be exposed to all of the flames? Uh, uh, heat he's, rises. He's sitting on the flammable if jacket. If you were underneath right. the horse, I would say, well, maybe he Nine has a chance. Nine times out of ten, because I don't want the suit to get burned. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I tell him, like, if the suit catches fire, yeah. you can jump off, okay. right? You know? Okay. And nine times out of ten, Dougie will do that. Right. Yeah. Nine so, times out of ten. Nine times I out have ten. another question. All right. Do you think at all? I, that yes, part I think of, all the time. That part of your ghost tour might be just interacting with ghosts of people you have killed? <laughs> well, that's interesting. <laughs> like... Like no, I you don't are know going that I've to the, anyone. You are going to the places where multiple stewards or duggies have you, perished. Uh huh. You don't think you've killed anyone. I you think don't. you're culpable. I certainly think that the events yes. that led to their death are, are your responsibility. This is what I know. This is look, this is what I know and what I would testify in court if God forbid I should ever find myself there. <laughs> is we go down the close. Yeah. We go down at which is a little alleyway. I don't know if you have closes. We go sure, down the alleys, close. Yeah. And I tell the story. First, I pass off the suit to Dougie. Mm -hmm. And then we tell the story. And then Laird sets the horse on fire. And Dougie, on top of flaming horse, comes out of the clothes and runs out onto onto the high street. Screaming things like... 
the horse isn't screaming, but no, Doggy is. Yeah, that's right. He's saying things and jingling in his key. A lot of times he forgets to jingle the keys. <laughs> yeah, because that I, makes I me so fucking why, mad. Why, jingle the saying? fucking keys, that's part what of it. What kind of things might he be saying? Saying things like, oh, Christ, I'm on fucking fire. <laughs> you got to get, get me out of here. You know, what are you doing to me? Why are you standing around watching this? And stuff like that. It's <laughs> mm. <laughs> stuff like that, right? Yeah, right. all of which you would be fine with as long as he would jingle, just jingle the, jingle the <laughs> fucking keys back because that's part of that's a big part of it. Right, the ghost was famous for keys. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Anyway, and then they run out onto the high street, and then I don't know what happens to him yeah. after that part. Right, you, sure, you don't check up because you're moving on with the tour. I got to move on to the tour. You try to get the outfit back. I, well, uh, that's why I've got another guy to get the outfit at okay, that point. Oh, because okay. it's predictable that the horse is going to run. Right. And I'm not going to see Dougie sure. again tonight. I'm not going to see him. For, but you got to get that until outfit. Until tomorrow but, night. But so the Laird, chart remains of it at Laird the very probably least. Grabs i got a guy named outfit. Brian. <laughs> okay. Brian grabs the suit. Yeah. This is quite an operation. There's, yeah. a, lot, there's a few what guys. A moving how, parts. how many, on average, right? how many people each night pay to take the tour? <laughs> how many people pay to take the tour? Pay. Yeah. Paying customers. Well, it depends. In the height of the horror... The, of the tourist season, I might get about 40 people. Mm. All uh, right? Uh, that's uh, great. Per night. That's per great. night. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Now, and you've got to pay up front. Right. And a lot of them, I'll be honest with you, a lot of them are gone by the time we get to the close. Oh, it's a seven to hour Brody's tour. Close. Yeah. Well, a lot of them say- and they have- Go ahead. Well, they feel like I've seen a horse on fire. I think <laughs> yeah. I've seen the best it's of what it's going to do. But right. has, has it peaked? It has not peaked. What happened? Please continue. It's not peaked. Please continue. Then we go right to Edinburgh Castle. Mm. Now, at this point, the castle is closed. I mean, it's, you know. Sure. You can't it's go a, there. It's night. It's nighttime. Yeah. And unless they're doing the Are tattoo. All... The what? The tattoo. Unless they're doing the tattoo, it's closed. What? I don't know what that means. The unless... tattoo, the military tattoo. It's, oh, 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 oh. It's a drum and pipe okay, show that it, goes it, on at it. night. And then, I thought they had like a tattoo business happening in the middle of the night at Edinburgh. Oh, Castle. no, it's a no. different tattoo. Okay. But if that's going on, and that's what's sometimes even worse because there's a lot of uh, police and whatnot, and we're not a part of that. We're going to another, we're going down under the castle into the catacombs of the castle. Oh, my God. That sounds Ooh, so frightening. That's right. That sounds very haunted. It's a totally haunted down there, the okay. castle. What are, what, yeah, what's the story behind that? Well, well. Ooh. The story is Ooh. that there was a prisoner who was caught in the catacomb jails. Oh. And he tried to sneak out in a wheelbarrow full of horse shit. Oh, oh. oh. okay. Got it. And to this day, Uh-oh. people smell Wait, horse that's the shit. end of that story? He just tried to do it? That's right. Well. Was he successful? They suspected there was a man in that wheelbarrow of horse They shit. just saw a wheelbarrow of horse shit going through the it catacombs. It was being wheeled someone, out by a soldier. Someone thought there might be a man in it. They had a, a suspicion. No, no, no. It goes on from there. Oh, okay. Ooh. And then several soldiers grabbed their bayonets and stabbed at the pile of shit. Okay. And killed the prisoner dead. There oh. was a prisoner. That's right. Okay. okay. Their suspicions They weren't were just true. stabbing shit and then they had shitty blades of their bayonets. Well, from what I understand, they stabbed the shit every time a wheelbarrow of shit oh. came in or out of the castle. Oh, but the prisoner didn't know that. He didn't. He wasn't aware of that yeah. practice. Oh, okay. And this was the one and only time there was a guy in there. You would think that maybe Maybe someone had tried it beforehand and succeeded. And, and then that's they were why like, they oh, were like, we better start we stabbing. Start stabbing From what shit. I understand, it was a precautionary measure. They said, you know what? It could happen. They're thinking chestnut checkers. They're thinking, checkers. that's right, right chestnut yeah. checkers. They're thinking ahead and think Chestnut checkers. Chestnut checkers. <laughs> chestnut checkers, checkers on, on an, an open, open fire. fire. Join along. Well, have you got Christmas over here? <laughs> we do. <laughs> have you? Yeah, it's well, right great. after Thanksgiving for us. I, I don't know what that is. Mm. You'd love it. Have you got Hogmanay? Uh, what is Hogmanay? Yeah, oh, you haven't got Hogmanay? Uh-uh. No. Oh, that's New Year's. You have a big Hogmanay party. And what happens in a Hogmanay party? Hogman- oh, you, oh, you just get pissed. That's all. Oh, great. That's okay. Right. So what happens on your tour what, what, when you're in the catacombs? Yeah. Well, people say that they can smell horse shit. That's right. And so what we do uh-huh. is I pick somebody on the tour at random. Right. And I put them in a wheelbarrow full of shit. Oh. <laughs> One of the tourists. That's who's, right. who's shit? Where do because you get this shit? Point, we're mixing it up. Well, we have a shit? guy. <laughs> I've got a guy. And I don't ask where he gets it, but I'll tell you, you can tell the Probably difference. Probably his butt. <laughs> you can tell the difference between like a livestock shit, right? Yeah. And, sure. You know what I mean? And it's not livestock. 
I start shit, I'll tell you a lot really? of the time. Yeah. yeah. But it's enough to fill a wheelbarrow? He's, I don't know where he does it or how he does it. His name is Roderick. Mm. And every huh. night he gets a full wheelbarrow full of shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that you can fit a human being into. You can cover, you can complete, because that's what I say. You've got to be able to fully cover a human being. How do you coax this tourist into the wheelbarrow. Well, that's why I've got another guy. Oh, no. <laughs> who's in charge of that. Because a lot of the time, you get tourists, and they'll be all pissed, you know. They had a few drinks, and they'll say, yeah, I'll do it, you know, that's for me, that's good for me. And okay. they'll jump right in there. But a lot of the time, you get, you say, well, I'm not I'm not doing that, right? Yeah, that's obviously human shit. I don't, yeah. that's right. shit, shit just in general. Right, right. exactly. Right. And yeah. at that point, I've got a friend named Angus who's he's very tall. Oh, and okay. he's So quite, you have three people so far just working <laughs> This Working part shit of the door. Detail. This is a tough one, yeah. Well, it's the castle, all right? <laughs> sure, I mean, you've got to sure. do something. Is this great. the finale yeah. or is this where? Oh, no. Oh, okay. We're only a couple <laughs> hours into the tour. At oh, this we got we to get I don't, through okay. some of it. I don't want to. I don't have to. I don't want to tell you everything on the tour. I don't want to jump too far ahead in this story. Right. Uh, why don't you finish about Angus? But then I've got a question. Well, Angus makes sure that somebody gets in that fucking <laughs> wheelbarrow one way or another. How does Angus do it? Okay. That yeah, well, might lead to my next question, <laughs> which is do you have rifles with bayonets? that you then are used in this part of the tour. Well, that would be a good idea. It's just a knife. He's just got a okay. long fucking knife. Okay. <laughs> and he pulls it out and it makes an impressive sound when he pulls it out of the scabbard. It's like, like a real <laughs> shing. Oh, shing. Point and as soon oh, as yeah. you hear that, it's yeah. like, well, You get in the wheelbarrow. You get in the fucking wheelbarrow. Right. Because it's better you should smell like shit for the rest of the night. Then right. get stabbed Then by you a... should get stabbed by a guy. Yeah. Well, but does, the, does person... the person then get stabbed? Yes! <laughs> You guys are good. Yeah, I, I mean, saw that coming. You did. Yeah. Well, I tell you, most of the people on the tour don't see it coming yeah. based on the reactions that I get. <laughs> They're shocked. They can't believe it happened. Right. And They're witnessing a murder. No, 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 no. We yes. don't, no. no. Or a, seen... a maiming. Or, or yeah, or whatever. Does the person who was in the wheelbarrow yeah. under the shit right. rejoin the tour? Sometimes they do for a little while. <laughs> Just long enough to get out to the street. You know, collapse to find them. Because we are way down deep in the catacombs. Sure. It'd be hard to find your way out without a guide. Interesting. So they right. might be mad. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? They might feel, you know, or whatever. Right. And, and then, but they better come along with me Can I ask you to come out of the castle. A question because I, we don't have a lot of, of more time to go through every aspect of the tour. I, right. I, I, right. You, I you genuinely have, wish we did. Well, yeah, I don't want to tell you the whole tour. I don't sure. want to give it all away. Yeah, keep some secrets. But yeah. there are 40 people on average. That, By this point, it's down to usually three or Four. How many? Yeah, how many people actually make it through to the other side? <laughs> to the end of the tour. To the yeah. other side, like to the not afterlife, to <laughs> not to heaven, but to, to the end. Well, we always get. I make sure there's one. So it's like a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory it's kind of situation. It's a lot like that. It's huh. a lot like that. And what that. happens to that one person? The what? The last person. Yeah. Well, the end of the tour is we tour a ghost ship. Oh. We go up to the Firth. Mm. Uh, all right, and we go out on the pier. And and there's a ghost ship docked at the pier, but you can't see it. You, you can't. Oh, you, an actual ghost ship. You can't so see it's the invisible. boat, but it's there. Okay. It's a ghost ship there at the pier. You can't see it. Right. And then we we tell the last person on the tour get on the fucking ghost ship, <laughs> walk the plank, <laughs> fucking get on the ghost ship. Right. You're gonna get on it. <laughs> right. And you're gonna sail it all the way over uh -huh. to the other side of oh. the earth. Oh, okay. wow. that's right. So you're drowning someone. Out, out to Crail, and we stand there, <laughs> and we watch him swim. And it's a long swim yeah. Yeah. all the way up to Crail. That's a long way, and we make sure that they don't fucking turn around and come back this way. <laughs> Who is doing this with you? We stay up there. You have some friends <laughs> yeah. helping you here? Yeah. At this point, I've got a bunch of guys there. <laughs> There's a whole bunch. I don't even know their names. They're guys that pick up, you know, they're fishermen and whatnot, and guys... <laughs> You know, dock workers, dock workers, and all that. And yeah, the just the guys. seedy wharf rats. Just the sort of guys you meet out there at the wharf. That's right. In the middle of the night. In the middle of the night, in the wee hours, it's like the dregs when the sun's coming up, and these sure. guys have been up all night. Yeah, you know, yeah. and they're hoping to pick up a fishing boat or something like yeah, that. Perhaps to get they've on. just uh, had the usage of a prostitute or two. Very likely, mm -hmm. and specifically like a, a seaside, a seaside prostitute. Yeah, and that's a particular kind. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's very, a particular. Kind, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They seem like they just wandered out of the sea. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> oh, this it, tour. I mean, uh, listen. This is the exact kind of stuff that like you want to do when you go to like a city is experience like it's seedier side or the dangerous, the haunted, mm -hmm. the scary right, stuff. People that's love right, being scared. That's right. You don't. This get that. sounds like though, just like um, like a murder tour. <laughs> 
It sounds like you're luring people. We know we have one friend who goes, lures people out to international him. waters. <laughs> uh, well, that's too far. We just stay in the fair. This is almost like like a uh, interactive uh, production right. across a city. Yeah. It's uh, like Tony uh, and Tina's wedding almost. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if you have that in Scotland. I haven't got that. I don't know them. Mm. We do have weddings though. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> people <laughs> get together and they'll decide to become married. Right? Yeah. Do you have, have a wedding, wedding. special? <laughs> oh, sure. Well, we get a lot of bachelorette parties, you know, oh, yeah. hen oh, yeah. parties and whatnot. Yeah, and just like Shay Lamas. Have a great time with them when they come and the bride and, and they're all right. They come pissed. They come fully pissed. Yeah. And so they leave for dead. anything. That, well, you know, I mean, they leave. <laughs> But uh, this mortal coil. <laughs> we try when it's a hen party. We try to end up with the bride at the end. You know. Yeah. I mean? Oh, sure. That's very special. It's for just them. more dramatic. They're shivering. They're wet. <laughs> Get on the ghost ship. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, this, Cameron. I mean, is, what, is are there any other highlights that we should? Uh, any other parts we should highlight or? Uh, you know, there's a headless piper. Oh boy, we've got cool. that. Good, you yeah. know, uh, it's just all kinds of things. You mm -hmm. know, we've got. Uh, well, I mean, there's a couple of guys, Burke and Hare, who were. Uh, they were a couple of guys who were providing corpses to the medical school by way of murdering people. Whoa. And they kept stacks and stacks of corpses down in the underground. And so mm. when we go and visit the underground, I've got a guy who makes sure there's stacks and stacks of corpses down there. So you there. got your own Burke and Hare. <laughs> so for sort of your like, Burke. That's not what their tour. names are, but that's are you what collecting I call them. the corpses from the previous nights? Is that what's happening? I do, again, it's just like the shit. I don't ask where they get them. I just say every night we get down there, there better be stacks and stacks How of corpses. How many? When you're saying stacks, and <laughs> stacks and stacks. I mean, I'm pretty mad if there's like less than a dozen. You know what I mean? <laughs> And yeah. if there's like 12... A dozen it, stacks? A dozen stacks of corpses. <laughs> how, how many, many, are in how a many stack? corpses in a stack? Well, I mean, that's a standard number. You've got to have five in a stack. Right? Okay. It's, not, it's not a stack without five. Stick, it's so like 60 you corpses. Dozens like and have, dozens of stacks of five corpses each. Just That's about wow. right. I'd like to have at least three at least dozen 60. stacks. Oof, that's just to tell the story of corpses. Burke and Hare. And it's a short story. It's yep. not much of a story. Right. It's based. I've told it to you, but it's the visual impact of all these stacks oh. Stacks of corpses. It's like going there. to Auschwitz or something like that. Okay. <laughs> It's a bit like that, yeah. This is horrible. <laughs> I I have to admit that uh, I was intrigued when I first heard uh, about your business, and you're still intrigued, right? I'm, I'm very intrigued. You are inter You are one of the interesting people that we talk to this every single week. Very on the show. interesting. It's yeah. very interesting, and I am interested. I'm not interesting. No, but I I can't say that I would ever attend your tour. What do you mean by that? I just you got to come check it out. It's great. We do it every mm. night at sunset. We meet at the statue. There we great no, friends, you, Bobby. We, we've covered this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Except Extensively. And I, you got to pay up front. Yeah, that's. I'm now understanding why it? you want that money up front. Well, that's right. How much Absolutely. is it, by the way? It, well, I, what did I say it was? I, I don't think you ever did. I don't think you did. It's on a sliding scale. Oh, boy. It starts at whatever's uh, in their pockets. <laughs> It's whatever's in their pockets. Ooh, I have we'll, a question. We'll take passports and jewelry. Oh, do, people, do people who might be at the statue of the Grey Friar Bobby uh -huh. know that they're on a tour? That's a great question. <laughs> a lot of the time they don't. They don't. It's okay. a popular meeting spot. You know, sure, a lot of people okay. say, meet so me at Grey Friar's Bobby, yeah. and they may be there for something else. Yeah. For some they, sort of illicit the tour. Uh, or they might be there for anything. Yeah, the right. tour you know, just starts happening the to tour, them. And you know what else? There's other tours that meet there. Okay. There's a Harry Potter tour. Oh, and so you're appropriating some of those people? <laughs> That's right. We right. make sure. We get some of those guys. So you're like, this is Diagon Alley. <laughs> this is... I don't know anything about Harry Potter. <laughs> but I say, you know, I'll, I'll grab some of those Harry Potter people. And you yeah. don't know it until you get down to the close where we're setting a horse on fire. And they say, I don't remember this yeah. from Harry Potter. <laughs> you got to learn at least like three Harry Potter things just to keep them. Yes. Like Gryffindor, right. Voldemort. Yeah. And you it's could about, call the, uh, house, the horse on fire you could refer to as a festral. A festral, that's yeah. good. Yeah. And say, it's about male witches, right? Isn't that about that? Yes. It's, it's about female. male witches. It's not, it's, yeah, and they're, and they're going from video game <laughs> to video they game. They go from video game <laughs> yeah. to video game yeah. looking for a broom. Right, yep. yeah. <laughs> looking for one broom. <laughs> for one broom. Everyone's trying to find that broom. Well, Cameron, it's it's always interesting talking to someone wow. like you. Uh, What's great I wish to you luck. be here. I wish you luck. If you're ever in Edinburgh, come by. Don't think so. Do the ghost I, tour. In fact, I'm going to stay far away from that when the sun goes down. I, but, I would imagine is, there would be stories about you uh, in the future that uh, people would have ghost tours that revolve around. This is not a bit of tour. This is not a trip I would like to take with you. No, definitely not. Uh, but uh, good luck to you. Good luck to your business. 
Yes, you were going to say something? Well, it's very discouraging what you're saying about me, Enterprise. I don't like it. I apologize, but... Uh, it's very offensive, you ought to know that. Well, uh, I would only think because this, uh, it it's... seems as though your trip uh, is... The last is... trip anyone will yeah. ever take. I, 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 I hate yeah. to discourage this people... This might be the last fucking podcast you ever fucking well, do. I'm sorry, I, I don't believe that this podcast appearance will have the effect upon your business that you hoped it would. It's going to bring people in that like to be scared. That's what's going to happen. I don't think so. Look, we're running out of time. We just have have one last thing that we need to do on the show, and that's a little something called plugs. All right. A plug walks down the street and says, why am I stuck with Scott Ackerman? Could <laughs> be hot saucer men? Definitely not what's a pot dog. I'm here in the Airwolf studio. Just lost a would you rather now. Floor wasn't open for questions, answered too early. Now I'm gone and I'm gone and there's not much in the show, yeah. This comedy bing bang bong theory with Bip Bopperman, Bopperman, and some wacky guests, yeah. Spinning infinite me say it's been wop it up now. If you laugh me on your podcast, you'll get to hear my plugs. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm into it. I can call you Scotty, Scotty, when you call me, I will plug. Uh, 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 it's time for plugs. Oh, God. There we go. I'm into it. All right. That was Call Me Plugs by Josh Kohler. I liked it. Had a real Mountain Goats vibe. Uh, I mean, it's basically you can call me out. It is. You can call me. I know that. Yeah, but so it, it has, had a vibe uh, of, of like that. But do you mean the recording style? Yeah, the recording style and his voice his reminded voice. me of... Finn and Reedy. Uh, J- yes, John mm-hmm. Jarnell. Copy that. All right. What do you like to plug, Jason? What do you got? Uh, um, I will plug, um, still available on Netflix, the cartoon show, animated show, Big Mouth, uh, Nick Kroll, mm-hmm. John Mulaney, myself. You also have The House, Chance the Rapper's favorite film. I know. How funny was that? The oh, House great. is He's on- He's right about it. It's rent, a film. Yeah, rent the house on whatever you want. And also, um, uh, it's November? Yep. Yeah. Uh, no Activity. No, There's a TV show called No Activity on CBS All Access mm. that I think has started. Oh, boy. That I'm on. Okay. Uh, you also have a big show coming up December 10th. I'll talk about that. Yep. Uh, great. But uh, And, of course, as always, the How Did This Get Made podcast. Of course. Right here on the Earwolf Network. Well, I want to plug, uh, I was just talking about it, December 10th, we have the PCAST Blast. Very excited about this. Comedy getting Bang Bang. Getting ready to PCAST in your face. Yeah, blast in your face. A comedy Bang Bang, How Did This Get Made, Improv for Humans, Hollywood Handbook, Who Charted, and Playing Games with Jimmy Pardo. All on one bill, one ticket price. You can see all those shows. And they're all Amazing. on stage at the same time, happening concurrently. Happening concurrently, of course. Just like all those episodes of Friends. Everybody everybody gets a mic, everybody can talk. Yep. Uh, December 10th, uh, uh, tickets on sale. Ace Hotel. Uh, Ace Hotel. Theater at the Come Ace Hotel. Come in from out Los of town. Angeles, please. Come in from out of town. Stay at the hotel. We're going to be doing uh, some special things. Uh, going to make it a really fun night, I think. We're uh, going to be, you said you would give unlimited high fives. Unlimited to anyone on stage. Anybody who you want. <laughs> Anybody wants I'll them? I'll let anyone rush the stage at any time. No you security. You should not have said that. No security. <laughs> you cut that from the podcast. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Cameron, what do you want to plug? Cameron McGonagall's ghost tours that are scary. <laughs> that's been endorsed you gotta, by Scott you gotta, Ackerman no, and Jason Manzoukas. No. You have to adjust that name. No, it's a great name. No, you got to adjust it to you will be murdered. <laughs> no, not everyone. Come on now. But come on down to Edinburgh. But don't stay too long. But come down. <laughs> get on the fucking bus, the though, at a certain point. Get in the fucking bus. Unless and go you're back dead. to Ireland. Unless you're dead. I'm also in a band called Alexander's Good Time Ragtime Band. <laughs> Oh great! And that's put for me. Fuck! <laughs> that was I. I was just imitating them. You're in that. Well, I'm in that band. Wow, that. that's incredible. We're playing at the Banshee Labyrinth wow. down there on the wow. Royal Mile. Okay, you sound a little like. That's just it. Yeah. Oh that, my god! That's amazing. Just it. That's a great band. Yeah, you're not like the Red Hot Chili Peppers who go. We're not a dance band. No. <laughs> okay, right. Not a ponytail whipping band. No. Okay. Anything else to plug or is that? No, that's the about it. Yeah, right, come on down. Close up the old plug bag. All 
right, guys. Uh, I want to thank our guest, Jason Manzouk. It's always good to see you. Thanks, buddy. Great times. Uh, appreciate it. Cameron McGonagall. Uh, it's great to be here. It's great to be here. I have to say you uh, have revealed yourself to be one of the <laughs> monstrous types that we occasionally <laughs> talk to on this show. Somebody who types. seems somebody who seems innocuous well in- at first. Well-intentioned mm-hmm. and, and benevolent in the beginning. Very friendly. Uh, with a, a true uh, harrowing pathology underneath. Lads, I'm sorry if I gave you that impression <laughs> about myself. I it's don't not know, an impression, I it's don't merely know, the facts. I don't know where you got that idea. I'm a lovely guy. I've got a lot of wonderful friends. You have a family? I've got, no, I've got a family anymore. Have you anymore. murdered your family? <laughs> anymore? Oh, All right, no, we don't anymore. have time. Anymore? All right, we gotta go. Thanks, bye. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for listening, and I have an intriguing query for you. Imagine if John Lennon could give you more advice than he did in the song Imagine. How amazing would that be? Well, he can. In Questions for Lennon, the Stitcher Premium Series, which is back for season four. That's right, Comedy Bang Bang guest John Lennon, played by Mike Hanford, He teams up with guests to answer questions sent in by listeners. Uh, This is a really funny show. You know Mike Hanford's John Lennon character, and you can get so much more of it. And I'm on this season. I did an episode. It was very funny. Uh, I don't mean I was funny, but uh, he was. Other guests this season include Betsy Sodaro, Paul Rust, Aaron Whitehead, Darcy Carden, and Paul F. Tompkins. Listen to Questions for Lennon on Stitcher Premium for a free month. Go to stitcherpremium.com slash Lennon and use promo code CBB. This is Bill Macy, and you're listening to Gilbert Gottfried's amazing podcast. Amazing colossal podcast. Amazing colossal. I'll do it again. This is Richard Lewis, and you're listening to the wait, Gilbert Gottfried's amazing what? Colossal podcast. Okay. Hi, this is Bill Macy. You're listening to Gilbert Gottfried's amazing podcast. Colossia, but you, you keep leaving out Colossia. Hi, I'm Dee Wallace, and you're listening to Gilbert Godfrey's amazingly colossal podcast, <laughs> baby. Isn't this Gilbert Godfrey's amazing colossal podcast with Bill Macy? Yes. That's what I just said. <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried's Amazing Colossal Podcast, available on iTunes, Earwolf, Stitcher, and wherever podcasts can be heard. New episodes every Monday, with bonus episodes on Stitcher Premium every Thursday. Go to gilbertpodcast.com for more info. This has been an Earwolf production. Executive produced by Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, and Colin Anderson. For more information and content, visit earwolf.com. Earwolf.com.